it's nice that you have such a blank slate to try moves and uh, obviously I'm quite pleased to win. Sometimes you can compare some lines to normal, normal chess that you already know. <laughs> But yeah, just use a computer and try to some, find some ideas and mainly try to get the king <laughs> to some, some decent square. That was my main preparation. That's why this F3 line, yeah. Ich habe ja früher als Kind eben auch schon die Open-Turniere mitgespielt. Ich glaube, im B-Open oder so habe ich angefangen damals. Dortmund war schon für die Schachwelt schon immer ein großes Event. Also früher das war es halt eigentlich immer mit, mit das stärkste Turnier. It's a great possibility to be here. I'm very thankful for that. I mean, I just have to step in the train in the morning and ride the train for 10 minutes and then I'm at that venue, which is great and I can play alongside the strongest players in the world. So that's just a great opportunity to play here. Hello and welcome to the final round of the Dortmund Sprachkassen Chess Trophy. Your commentators for one final time. My name is Fiona Steil Anthony, and alongside me, uh, it's been a pleasure throughout the week to have Grandmaster Arthur Yusupov. Thank you. Arthur, how are you doing on this final day of the event? A very exciting event, yes, and the uh, last round uh, is very interesting, and uh, everything is still possible. So, um, happy that we have our chess friends with us. Uh, welcome to our broadcasting and uh, we will look maybe at, at, at the tables uh, to see the situation. Absolutely. Starting with the Grand Prix, we will have a look at the last round uh, pairings. And actually, well, in both events, we have a leader. We'll see it in a second by half a point. But let's look at the pairings first. The two main games uh, that will decide the tournament winner are Matthias Blubaum against Dirk and uh, Navarra against Elianov Elianov, who is currently the leader. We'll see that in a second. What are your expectations for those two games as the two first uh, in the rankings, Dirk and Elianov, play with Black? You know, it's a very interesting situation because I, I think that both uh, Matthias and David, they are uh, really the, the uh, very very strongly motivated. Mm -hmm. They would love to finish the tournament with uh, victory, and uh, they uh, having uh, leaders, so maybe they could profit from mm -hmm. the situation. Yes. So I expect a very hard fight on the uh, top boards, as well actually as the the parent uh, 
Rasmus Svane against Derwin Lamy because again these two players also are looking forward to win at least one mm -hmm. game. Okay, they can only win one game. Yes, but it's incredible that in the tournament actually, and we see now uh, the standings going into the last round, only the top three players there, Pavel Ilyanov, uh, Bogdan Deak and Luke McShane, have won games. The, the bottom four are still looking for their first uh, win. I should probably mention that Luke will be our guest. You can see that he already finished the tournament and he had positive result. Unfortunately, he lost in a very uh, high-level fight against Diak in, in the last round, so he cannot uh, win this event already. But uh, he had extremely uh, good. Imp he left extremely good impression, playing very strongly. Absolutely. So Luke McShane, well, he is actually uh, assured already of third place, as nobody can catch him. And then, well, we have the big fight for first and second. Pavel Ilyanov, as we mentioned, I mean, fantastic performance. Uh, four out of five. He's won three games, drawn two, and Deak just half a point behind him. Uh, so Deak will for sure try today, even with the black pieces, to catch him, especially as uh, his life rating. Deak is 2699.7. Ah, we thought he was already 2700. Yes. So I think a draw today will probably leave him, you know, on 26, 99, 98. So he will try for sure. He will too. try it. But he is a very interesting player. Mm -hmm. I think he tries in every game to to get the maximum from the chess position, but in a way, in very balanced mm -hmm. way, not overdoing it. Absolutely. So that's uh, the, the, those are the, the standings and the situation in the Grand Prix. Now let's have a look at the NC World Masters, the last round pairings. Vichy and Anand will be playing with the white pieces against Mickey Adams. And in the other game we have Dimitri Collars against Daniel Friedman. What are your, your thoughts on those two, two matches? It's again a very interesting situation and uh, of course this first uh, Pairing is classical. Mm -hmm. Anand played so many times against Anand, uh, Adams, and that's very, very interesting pairing. And uh, the fight piece is slight favorite, uh, of course, and uh, probably even draw could suit him, but not for sure because if the, if at the same time Dmitri wins yes. and uh, Anand makes a draw, then. Dmitry can catch him and even overtake on a number of wins. Absolutely. So here is the situation, uh, which, as you just mentioned, the first tiebreak is the number of wins. And since Dmitry has actually lost the game, it means he's one more. So if Vichy were to draw today and Dmitry win, Dmitry would actually be, be the winner of the tournament. Uh, so two absolutely... Uh, Massive games in this NC World Masters to end the tournament with. And, uh, well, in the game, Colors against Friedman, what's interesting there is Friedman probably has a double preparation because yesterday he was preparing, he said, for many hours uh, to play against Colors and then to his shock when he arrived in the playing hall, Vishian and was sitting there waiting for him. So we will see what he has prepared, but we'll start with, as you said, a classic the game between uh, Vichy and they have and absolutely Mickey. classical position. Yes. Uh, please remember that we are talking about no castling chess, so uh, castling is not allowed. Mm. I, I tend to forget <laughs> it myself uh, because the position, uh, what, what we have uh, now, uh, you can get it, uh, you can see it in all theoretical books. It's an uh, exchange v variation of Queen's Gambit. Mm -hmm. Let us see how the game proceeds from move on. Starting with C4, but after this uh, small transformation, we are getting uh, so-called exchange variation or Carlsbad variation of Queen's Gambit declined. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of my favorite openings I played that we fight in black, but I am afraid my theoretical knowledge wouldn't be useful in this case because, as I mentioned, you can't castle. Mm -hmm. 
And that's exactly what, what you want to do, for example, in this position. I would love to castle with black, but it is not allowed. I wonder, will Vichy once again try some king e2, rook e1, and king f1? Yeah, this is one, one of the possibilities, but of course, uh, in such a position, uh, you, you have uh, also some options. You can, for example, just uh, put the king on f1 mm -hmm. and maybe try to attack on the king side That's with, also with very h, interesting. h4. Yeah. Uh, we, we had seen, we, we've seen many options uh, mm -hmm. how you solve the problems of uh, the castling. Yes. Uh, it takes a little bit more time, or definitely more time than in normal chess, so uh, still it is very important. Still mm -hmm. it is very important uh, not only to put kink in a safe position, but also to connect the mm -hmm. rooks. Uh, now I think this is the main, uh, main question. Black is thinking what to do. No, he already made the choice. Knight of eight. Knight of eight is uh, actually interesting way to play. Uh, Black wants first maybe to put put the knight on good positions. Also opens the diagonal for the bishop. What is the standard reply on such an operation? You you may consider the move knight e5. Mm -hmm. 95 followed by the move f2 f4. Uh, that is interesting. Um, also for this type of chess, I think it is interesting concept because later you can put the king on 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 a square f2, uh, and that way more or less to solve the problem of coordination of the rooks and of the development. A very rich uh, position here with a lot of possibilities. What do you think uh, Black's idea is behind this knight f8? How does Black want to position himself? Well, w one of the tasks what Black has is somehow to develop this bishop. And so knight is usually goes mm -hmm. to, uh, to f8 in these variations, uh, but uh, after the lo after the short castle and rook e8, uh, so that would be normal normal way to play it. Uh, actually, I can show it because my uh, computer, I guess, uh, is not adjust to no mm -hmm. castling. So that would be a classical way to mm -hmm. to play this position. And then knight has the square f8, uh, which is useful to maybe protect the pawn on h7. In case white will play queen c2 mm -hmm. and create a battery um, towards the pawn. Mm -hmm. So, but of course not allowed. Yes. And so uh, black uh, decided first to uh, develop the knight. Knight is going probably to g6, mm -hmm. uh, where it starts to control some central squares. But if the knight goes to g6, does it not encourage white to play h4, h5? Yes, that that could be an option, uh, true. And also knight would be under some pressure if white would put queen on c2. So this combination is interesting. Um, so maybe uh, Michael has a totally different idea. Uh, there is a possibility for black to develop the knight on e6, mm -hmm. for example, and later play g6, knight goes to g7, and then bishop goes to f5. Mm -hmm. So this much more complicated uh, plan, yes. uh, which happens uh, normally after short castle again, but it, it was planned, for example, Nigel Short was playing mm -hmm. this with black pieces in the similar mm -hmm. positions. Uh, why it is useful to exchange white colored bishops? Because if you see the pawn structure, we look for many pawns already on white squares. So this bishop just has only one mm -hmm. diagonal. His opponent, the bishop on d3, uh, contrary to bishop c8, is much more mobile piece. So we are changing a better piece. 
Okay, so a very rich uh, start to the game here between Mickey, well, between Vichy and Mickey with a lot of different plans possible. Uh, Vichy, actually, what did Vichy? He played H3. He played H3. That, that is a kind of standard move. If we, if we interpret Black's plan as uh, maybe just m more simple way, yeah. that maybe he wants to play bishop g4, then of course h3 takes it, uh, this possibility away. Yeah. And maybe in some moments you can also mm -hmm. play g4, yeah. like uh, Daniel Friedman did against Vishwanathan Nant yesterday, mm -hmm. where Black was ready to put some knight, I think, on the 5 he played g4. And Mickey actually responded with knight e6. Uh, yes, that, then that means that we, we, we guessed correctly. Yes. Yeah, so yes. may g6 may follow. Actually, bishop h6 also was played. It's uh, logical for white not to exchange mm -hmm. this uh, good bishop. Uh, very, very interesting development. Uh, also, also uh, there are some other possibilities for black. Uh, apart from the move uh, g6, uh, we can also try something like knight h5, attacking mm -hmm. the bishop, exchanging it, and to have this position. Usually this kind of chess is followed by a long castle for black, which is not easy now to mm -hmm. do in no castle chess. The specific difficulty is uh, how to develop the king. Um, is of course something uh, what both players has to overcome mm -hmm. in these positions. Okay, so a very interesting start to the game here, and maybe let's move on to the other game uh, between Dimitri Kollars and uh, Daniel Friedman. Yes, we, we have here totally different opening. <laughs> very different indeed. Uh, some, uh, bishop yes. opening, uh, let us see how everything happened. And it's really incredible, I think, how many different openings we've seen throughout uh, this NC World Masters. We were afraid that it would be just uh, oh, English four. opening, yes. but uh, obviously uh, the players in preparation they discovered yes. that it is possible to interpret uh, it in different many ways, different in many ways. different yes. ways. So it is actually a good uh, advertisement for no castling chess. Uh, it's, this is an old form of chess which was played before invention of, of castling. Mm -hmm. So we have some moves standard for bishop opening, knight c3. Already this position could be reached from uh, Vina opening mm -hmm. with knight c3. Uh, usually it, it is connected with the idea to play f4, mm -hmm. but in, in this case uh, Dmitry had uh, different approaches. He plays bishop d2. Yeah, I think also playing f4 might be a bit more risky. In no, no custom no game, custom. yes, because you cannot evacuate the yes. king, you need time yes. uh, to support such an activity, and maybe opponent can create uh, counter chances at this moment. Uh, so far, so good, a very natural development, and uh, white is taking two bishops. Why not? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, something what White is trying to play for mm -hmm. in the future, this uh, very nice power uh, pair, uh, powerful pair of bishops. But next move of uh, Daniel, uh, of course, shows a lot of understanding of the situation. He wants to exchange one of the bishop, and that way uh, to reduce the advantage mm -hmm. of White. It's a standard defensive maneuver. And it is interesting that uh, Dmitry uh, wants to avoid this exchange at this moment, but uh, he can't do it for a long time. No, black played knight d7. Yeah, I have a question. Why didn't black play a6? It would be also possible. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, in the future, uh, 
uh, th this is a signal to me that Black maybe also would love to, to move to the F-pawn. To, to, to F mm -hmm. He can do A6 at basically any at, at any moment, and um, very possible that mm -hmm. this is a kind of plan yeah, which Black wants to follow. Maybe also White has the same option uh, to evacuate the king on F2. Mm -hmm. uh, Alvor, of course, we can imagine mm -hmm. a little bit longer plan as well. Mm -hmm. So, so far, uh, many, many interesting options uh, for both sides. Uh, Dmitry is thinking, uh, understandably, he needs to find the concept. Mm -hmm. But the position looks, for, for me, approximately equal, even. approximately even. Okay, so we'll come back here and we'll move on now to the German Grand Prix. And I think we should probably start with, uh, well, we can start with, with Dirk on the black side against Matthias Blubaum. Very solid opening, yes. very solid. I think Matthias was playing this already if i'm correct i think so yes um, let us see how it happened uh, from the move one uh, slav defense and e3 is solid continuation and uh, i think it, it it may be a little bit different uh, move order maybe with knight on f3 already but it will come to the same position i think he played it against David Nav Navarro. Ah, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Also very interesting game. Mm -hmm. And uh, G6 was played also there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I, I like this move, G6, because it gives black opportunity mm -hmm. to develop this bishop on 2 f 5 in many cases, mm -hmm. winning a tempo back, back. And if white will play bishop D3, for example, here, then black would okay. love to take on C4 basically winning a tempo mm. for this. So knight f3 happened, bishop g7, bishop e2, very solid continuation and uh, somehow it looked to me that it was very similar uh, game. And I think that the, uh, David played c6, c5, yes. if I... But what is surprising to me is that, especially what Matthias having played this in the in the tournament, that Derek is spending uh, quite a bit of time on the opening stage. That is true. That is, although he should be ready, yeah. Yeah, but maybe still didn't expect it. Uh, actually, he made the move. That's Bishop G4. One of the uh, possibilities, actually, because uh, we already saw this strategy in uh, many games of the tournament. Uh, Black is ready to exchange his bishop for the knight, and then maybe put many pieces, uh, many pawns on the white squares. Mm -hmm. uh, already he has a, mm -hmm. a lot of pawns. That way you will have some harmony between between black squared bishop who guards dark squares and uh, many pawns on white squares which are protecting white squares and restricting mobility of the opponent's bishop. So that's... Uh, and bishop uh, most likely will go uh, to f3 because mm -hmm. actually otherwise uh, why to put it on g4. Yes. Okay, so a very solid start uh, to this game. So far, we're still following a known known path. So let's check in with the tournament leader, uh, Pavel Ilyanov, and his game against Navarro. And okay, this is looking a lot more interesting already at first sight. Yes, but it is the same opening uh, as in the game Anand uh, Adams, uh -huh. but uh, only with possibility of to castle, so here we can compare uh, the classical chess, of course, looks uh, very rich and very attractive. Let us see how, it hap how it's happened. And we have here with slightly different move order, but we, we have 
Queen's Gambit declined. Mm -hmm. Knight B D seven is uh, uh, interesting move. Uh, asking maybe White what to do. Okay. Yeah, if Bishop G five, then we can play C six and play Cambridge Spring variation. Uh, so White decided to take immediately on D five. That gives him a choice where to put the bishop on f4 or to g5. David decides to put bishop on f4. Actually, in many cases, bishop is better position on f4. Later, white can play h3, f3, and to keep bishop. And if later white will uh, develop all his pieces, he may start mm -hmm. attack on the queen side with nice. g4. Mm -hmm. Now the whole forest of my <laughs> errors uh, I will now dismiss. I learned how to do it with one click. <laughs> Otherwise it would be hard work in this. <laughs> it was hard at the beginning of the tournament. Uh, C6 was played, a useful move, mm -hmm. protects uh, the pawns and, uh, of course, Maybe immediately it was not a threat to play knight b5 because, uh, I just saw, because maybe black would have a defense. But on a long term, on a long run, it's simply very useful for, mm -hmm. for black uh, to protect the pawn on yes. d5. And it was a preparation for the next move, knight h5. Mm -hmm. Attacking the bishop, asking him either to retreat from the optimal position or maybe to go to g3 where we will exchange him at uh, the right moment. White decides to exchange bishops, mm. going to g5. That meant a loss of tempo for White. Uh, he mm. first played bishop f4 and then bishop g5. but. Uh, this knight on h5 is not an ideal position, so black would also have to come come back. Uh, very interesting position, uh, actually very interesting variation, and uh, e3, standard move. Uh, g6 uh, needs a certain explanation. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes this knight may retreat to g7, and the other knight may go to f6, and the bishop, bishop can go to f5. Uh, some, so some similarities to uh, Anand, uh, Anand game. Yes. You know? Lone castle makes, of course, the position uh, very, very interesting. And I put the knight on f6, but uh, Pavel. Pavel puts the knight on uh, uh, B6, uh, probably better square. Uh, he definitely knows uh, the modern stand of the theory. And knight B6 also prevents me some white's activity. Mm -hmm. yeah, so because if you go to A4, black will just... Black can take. exchange, yeah, black can take. So probably it's better move than my knight uh, F6. And it is also indication that black is preparing long castle at mm -hmm. uh, his own. Uh, I would guess maybe bishop, so first knight g7, bishop f5, and then long castle. Mm -hmm. So it could be a possible plan for black. So maybe we, we can uh, quickly look at yes. the last game, because I, I still suspect it will be a big fight in the last game, so I have really sure. hopes. I think both Rasmus and, and Erwin are, are quite eager to get one win, so I also expect a, a big fight. And then, well, just tomorrow or the, the day after, they will both be traveling to Chennai, so they want to get there in high, high spirits. Yes, and, and it is so nice to finish the tournament with a victory. Yes. Yes, so, uh, they will be fighting very hard. Uh, uh, let's see uh, English opening. Let's see how it's happened. Starting with knight f3, but quickly we getting symmetrical position uh, with a difference that now uh, black avoids the symmetry mm -hmm. and playing e5. Uh, possible, possible move. 
that black is weakening the square d5 um, maybe shows also for white what what is the direction of the play mm -hmm. or how white can play uh, usually white is trying to punish black for, for this, this for, for, for this mm -hmm. uh, but it is difficult to do uh, because uh, it's only one weakness and black can uh, protect it uh, with two pieces for example with knight and bishop so it it will be in the next moves it will start blacks will start fighting for d5 as mm -hmm. well or trying to protect it and black also wants to support his powerful center yeah. yes. uh, let's see how, how it goes g3 very logical move because we said white wants to control the square d5 and mm -hmm. bishop of course developed to control it mm -hmm. uh, g6 to be able to protect the pawn bishop g2 bishop g7 a3 uh, very usual idea maybe after preparation white would love to expand also on the queen side but no yeah, no chance black is immediately stopping it uh, obviously we see that black is not too much afraid uh, to to weaken both squares we will see we will see. Uh, I think Erasmus started immediately uh, to try to uh, exploit this mm -hmm. and played d3. This is very interesting. Uh, I think he wants to postpone short castle mm -hmm. and to, to, to bring the second knight to control the square. Let's see what happened. Black played knight g7. Uh, and now the fight for d5 begins, starts, yes. begins, yes, white plays knight d2. Bringing control uh, at the moment, mm -hmm. but also very important that, that uh, that's why Stop I think it. the move, move order is important. Yeah. Uh, stopping d5, yeah. but black wants to reinforce this, yeah, this idea. Mm -hmm. But what happens now? maybe white would be able to put the knight on f3 and uh, and then to control the square defense yes. so very very interesting strategical position absolutely the, what white didn't castle uh, may allow him later to try even on the uh, king side mm -hmm. with h4 h5 but i suspect first phase of the game and is white is trying to, to control the d5 square okay well three very interesting battles in the grand prix we we'll go back to the nc world masters and see what developments we had as in the vichy game we see once again the king has indeed gone to e2 yes it seems to be a favorite yes. uh, development <laughs> Uh, l let us revisit it at the moment where we, we saw uh, last time mm -hmm. uh, black played knight e6 and bishop uh, bishop h4 and, and black as you predicted yes. yes but uh, the, in this case we have idea to to put the king mm -hmm. to g7 uh, i must say that michael was somehow struggling with this no castling chess yes. He had slightly more problems, in my opinion, as the other players. I would agree. Uh, especially against uh, Dimitri Kollers. This mm -hmm. is a classical game which shows how to use uh, the uh, absence of uh, coordination. Mm -hmm. yeah? So Kollers was really playing a model game. And yeah, very, very. I mean, I'm, I have to say I'm really incredibly impressed how Colors, who got this very last minute invitation to the NC World Matter Masters, how he played this no casting chess, uh, was yeah, very may, may, Maybe it's a good uh, not to prepare maybe too yes. much, just <laughs> to have a fresh approach. Yes. Uh, uh, let us see here what happened. Bishop G3, mm -hmm. uh, okay, possi possible move, of course, King F8, and now uh, explanation that White was preparing uh, this this move king e2 he f f feels yeah that the position in the center is secure mm -hmm. so far and uh, it takes his time maybe to be able to develop the rook yes. uh, 
Yeah, so black plays bishop d6 immediately trying to exchange the bishops. A bishop was good on this diagonal. Uh, please remember the game. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, just forgot. On, on the Grand Prix tournament, uh, Navarra against Pavel Ilyanov, and the same uh, uh, problem was there. Black, black was trying to exchange this dark squared bishop. Uh, you may say why black is uh, worried about it, uh, because you, you can say it formally, this dark squared bishop uh, is a good bishop. Mm. Yeah. Nevertheless, white, white bishop, first of all, is very active. And secondly, black wants to get some space uh, for other pieces. So for example, queen gets mm. a good position on d6 if bishops uh, would be exchanged. So, th so this is a, uh, uh, not that simple operation. Mm. Yeah. And Vichy decided to exchange the bishops? Yes. Uh, of course, he may go to h3, but that would look a little bit strange mm. uh, because we just came from, from yes. this square. <laughs> So bishop takes d6, queen takes d6. So we see here there is no problem now for black pieces in mm -hmm. finding uh, uh, reasonable positions. Uh, and Vishay is thinking, but rook e1 seems look, to be a logical. Oh, wow. Look at this move. I, I do like it. <laughs> Vishay has other ideas. <laughs> I, I like this move, even if computer is not supporting mm -hmm. this. Yeah. But uh, just just uh, look what what is is the intention. Very likely that he wants to continue his duck square strategy, yes. just to exchange it. This maneuver is more typical for French defense, uh, known from famous game Bandarevsky Batvinik, where Batvinik with pawn on h6, he moved the king and then played queen g8, queen h7, activating the queen this way. A very interesting chess. Very nice maneuver. <laughs> something, something for uh, for people to remember, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah? S such an idea, you don't have it too open, uh, too often, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, another example is a great game of uh, Rubinstein, where he brought the queen over b8 to a7 and that how mm. he developed the queen and brought it to, to the struggle. And how do you think uh, Mickey should react to this idea? It's a good, good question. Uh, he can either completely ignore this, mm. with continuing his plan with king g7, because it's not that bad, yeah, everything. Uh, okay, may maybe putting bishop to b7 make, make here some uh, some sense because now then rooks mm -hmm. are freed and connected in b6. Uh, then the question also where Mickey wants to, to have his king mm -hmm. on g7 is very safe, on the 7 is a little bit more central. So if he would prefer the king to come to e7, then he may do something like b6, waiting for right of queen h2, exchanging it, and uh, okay, maybe putting bishop on b7 first, and then still he has the option. Back to the center. Yes, he can decide mm -hmm. it later. So basically mm -hmm. that what we see at the moment, uh, but it could, it could be, of course, some other ideas. But I'm not sure that he can really uh, avoid this exchange, yeah, because, OK, let's see what happens if you try to avoid this exchange and play queen before. I am afraid that white queen would, would have some very nice mm -hmm. positions yes. here in the center. Because be first, first we may protect the pawn this or that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then queen can go to e5, pinning the knight f6. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that would be played. Okay, well, Mickey, uh, as we can see, he is still still thinking. 
So we'll come back here, but uh, indeed a very instructive plan by, by Vichy here. So we'll move on to Daniel, uh, Daniel Friedman with the black pieces against Dimitri Colors. And some, something happened, yes. not what we anticipated, no. that why it will take on C6, uh, uh, but maybe, we, we did not thought about it, maybe black has an idea to move the knight. Yeah. Ah, uh, and only later, yes. and then White would should uh, think what to do with yes. this bishop. Yes. Yeah. So, so he just decided to so take. So he, he decided this is a good moment mm -hmm. to take. And interesting move, and not untypical for something like Russian defense, mm -hmm. that you just throw the king on the in queens uh, on the king side, uh, mainly to avoid that the opponent would do the yes. same, yeah? to uh, have little initiative here. I also wonder, okay, now it's not possible after the, the move in the game, queen f6, but I was wondering if we could potentially put the king to d2 and... Uh, Be fight, yes. yes. True, this is a very okay, reasonable a position. Risky, I don't know. But could could be an option, uh, but of course, black no, it's not possible with anymore. Queen F6 prevented it. Maybe maybe he wants to clarify the yes. situation by offering exchange of the queens. Um, a very very small strategical advantage of white that black has double pawns. Mm. It would would be not easy to use uh, because the pawns are okay in defense. Mm. Mm. So uh, it could be a very very small edge for for uh, Dmitri in this position. Maybe developing the knight. Yes, that's what actually happened. Knight e2, and now we we should see what is the plan of mm -hmm. Daniel where he wants to put his king, and he played queen g6. Mm -hmm. uh, after this, no castling game well, would, would, so would, wouldn't matter, because black can leave the king in the center, there is no danger. But can white avoid uh, the Exchange. trade of queens? Yes. T not easy, what, how can we do it, because queen is also attacking. Yeah, I was wondering, if I go to h4, and mm -hmm. if you take, I'll go with g1. Uh, that's interesting. That's in definitely interesting. And if I go away, you may try to, to mm -hmm. take a pawn. If I go bishop g4, you take it. Yes, bishop g4 is stupid. <laughs> so uh, let us look more carefully at okay, this Maybe position. you can again offer a trade of queens with queen h3. That is true, that, that makes definitely sense. And we have semi-open position mm -hmm. now, king k7. Not a big harm. I prefer happen. this at least, I think, to the other. Then that is a little bit more yes. open position. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, uh, Dmitri, Dmitri is thinking probably mm -hmm. he takes this option seriously because otherwise yes. he would uh, exchange queens. Uh, let us see what, what, what happened. Yeah, if you take them, uh, although black has now even more double pawns, mm -hmm. uh, the moving the pawns towards the center uh, created a very interesting mm -hmm. situation. So it gives black some additional possibilities maybe to, to act here in the center and in the case on the king side the rook is making some pressure yes. on an open file. So it is really to consider what, what you suggested, queen h4 uh, and I also wanted to check the move g5, we, we still have uh, many good answers. Mm -hmm. First, we can consider cutting. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah, but we can also. You can take, but why to yes. even sacrifice H2. this one? Uh, right. Maybe not necessary because I think I'm going to give it back. It's uh, almost this, mm -hmm. this 
like position what we saw, but difference that the rook on g5 yes. and not on g7. Yes. Very mi minimum dif difference. So I, I think it's okay. Yeah, what you mm. said, maybe it's a little, bit, a little bit, more little bit better so chances yeah. for you in this case. Yes. yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what Dimitri will do, but I wouldn't be surprised if he plays Queen H4. We will see. Would, would be nice. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to the Grand Prix. And uh, we'll start with the game Blue Bomb against Deak. Yeah, let me give you some, some water. Thank you very it's much. It's become a lot warmer again today for the last day. Yes, we, we had very uh, nice weather. Yes. yes, maybe for people who are enjoying the holidays. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very there much. There you go. We have interesting situation. We already uh, talk about this exchange on F3. It happened, of course, uh, after H3, uh, Black took on F3 and put pawns a classical way. Exactly, yes, as you predicted. Ne next move of Diak sh shows actually his ambitions, yes, because he played knight C3, not is not afraid in, uh, that white no, is not afraid that white uh, black will take a pawn. Yeah, so Mat you mean Matthias ambition? That is true. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Matthias white. Mm -hmm. yeah, so he was not afraid that Diak will take. Yes. Uh, How would he follow up here? Of course, he he has some option. I think he will pick it uh, uh, mm -hmm. back. Yeah, this pawn. Also, maybe attacking it immediately is not so stupid because black can't play b5. Mm -hmm. We can take on b5. Yeah, and the and on the bishop is yes. hitting everything. So uh, he is not afraid of it. Mm. Yeah, that that is clear. And uh, uh, Bogdan just played tonight bd7. Uh, uh, mainly agreeing with this assessment. And also asking, okay, make a move now. Uh, B3 would be very conventional move, just to protecting pawn on C4. Okay, so it's a, a slow. They are moving quite slowly through this opening uh, phase. How do you think? Is they satisfied with what he got? Considering that he might have to play for. N okay. Not so clear because yeah. it's not easy to play for a win with if opponent has these two bishops. Mm. The structure uh, is solid, mm. but difficult to create activity. Uh, I had a, a very uh, big lesson from great Viktor Korchnoi when I was still young grandmaster. He crushed me with white pieces and this structure. So, of course, I have respect mm. uh, for two bishops after, mm -hmm. after this game. Okay, so we will see, but I, I think Matthias also, we, Matthias hasn't had, you know, the best tournament, not the result he was hoping for. He but will fight today as a lion, yes. I, am, I am sure, yes. I am sure. So it is uh, not a bad idea actually uh, for, the act, to be for the act to be solid in this game. Mm. The, the, you shouldn't look at, at the uh, table yeah. Yeah, because uh, Matthias already proved in this year how strong he is and he's a uh, European champion yes. and uh, uh, played very good uh, before this mm -hmm. event and this event little bit unfortunate actually. Okay, so oh wait, we just had one move. We, we had B3, it, it we B3. had B3, yes. so we, we anticipated this fortunately. Uh, so uh, maybe we can move. We can move to the next position. So we'll go to our tournament leader, Pavel Elianov, uh, who has also castled queenside since we left the position. So let's come back and see. Yes. It is a very natural way to do it, but also something happened with bishop g4. After knight b6, uh, that actually was a very interesting uh, situation, because if white would play like Anand, preventing 
bishop g4, then uh, black would play bishop f5. f5 mm -hmm. Harrison, the queen on c2. And, um, yeah. So that uh, also the way to mm -hmm. develop it. That was alternative. Mm -hmm. And after the move bishop d3, black uh, decided for a different strategy, exchanging this white squared bishop, which over otherwise would be a bad bishop. Somehow, this is our favorite theme. Mm -hmm. It really theme. has been, not only today, but really throughout, throughout the tournament. Just to explain why it is bad, bad bishop. Yes. It's not so bad, but uh, mm -hmm. just look at all this pawn structure. Yeah, all pawns on the white squares, they would restrict some possibilities. Mm -hmm. Bishop has only one diagonal and not so much work to do. That's why decision of Elianov to exchange it against the knight. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Navarro wanted to provoke it, not waiting. Maybe if you wait, maybe your opponent would mm -hmm. think and maybe he is going to exchange it for the bishop. So Navarro wants to, to be sure that he will get this position. But now the structure is uh, not simple anymore. White has double pawns. Double pawns make it much more difficult for white to uh, do something on the king mm -hmm. side. So he has a limited possibility now. Long castle makes a lot of sense because castling short uh, in under these circumstances is much more challenging, much more dangerous because white would put the pressure over the open open line. So long castle, standard way to develop and what did David in this played position. Queen b3. David played queen b3. Uh, yes, we have to try to understand the point of the, this move. OK. It, one stage we just controlling the square c4. Maybe we we want to play a4 and five later. I was going to ask later. you about that. Yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, otherwise, how can we explain Justify, the move? Justify. Yes. Uh, and meanwhile, what will Black do? It feels like the knight on h5 should probably find a new home, or uh, slowly. Yes, yes. But that that is uh, of course a question where to. Be where uh, Pavel wants to have his knight, one option would be to bring it to e6. Mm -hmm. And maybe another idea to play e5. I'm not really favoring it. I'm, I'm sorry now for my forest <laughs> of green uh, arrows. Yes, I'm not really favoring it at the moment, yes. Mm -hmm. And the second uh, possibility is not to rush and to maybe to start with king b8 mm -hmm. first, the move which is possibly uh, just in, in plans of black. Yeah, until now Pavel has played very quickly. I'm curious to see if he will take some time now to decide does he want to go king b8, does he want to reroute the knight, and if how so. Um, I, I'm also assisted not also with engine, and engine is clever. Understanding that white wants mm -hmm. to push a pawn, the suggest of engine is to, to protect this knight b6 first by playing queen c7, for example, or even king c7 it considers. And, the idea. and if a4, I'm sure now they move a5. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's a very interesting situation. Nice. And uh, from Pavel, I actually. Uh, can expect something like this uh, because it goes perfectly uh, well with our discussion. And mm -hmm. Pavel was with us. We, we found, and I think in the game of Erasmus against Luke, we found some prophylactical yes. ideas yes. and we were talking about prophylactical thinking. And pa Pavel, of course, uh, also, uh, he said that he had a, a also very good memories of uh, training with Mark Dvoretsky and Mark, also my chess teacher, and so I'm feeling connected to Pavel. <laughs>
in this sense. So if he will play queen c7, we know why he is doing, then it is prophylactic move. Yes. We will see. So Pavel now uh, taking a little bit of a thing. We will see if he does indeed defend the knight on b6, and we will check in with the last game we haven't seen, uh, Rasmus Fana against Evel Lamy. I just want to... Uh, of course, this is probably all, all theory, and this maneuver knight d2, knight f1, you may fa fa find in books, and Rasmus was perfectly aware of it, uh, but uh, he had his move was knight f1, uh, bring the knight to f3 and took control over the... Uh, square d5. In this game, the players are playing uh, quite slowly. They are taking taking their time. Both have spent 22, 23 minutes to get here, and rook b8 was Evans' choice. Yes, but whatever that means, yes, we, we have to understand. Yes. Yeah? Uh, I think he's already at some stage play b5, but when it will be useful, uh, difficult to say for me. Maybe first to be prepared mm -hmm. if knight move. Let us see what is going on. Knight d5. Maybe first take on d5. Knight takes d5 and now b5. Oh, that's his idea. His idea that, uh, this or maybe in slightly different form. That's the idea of his counterplay. That's why rook, rook b8. This very mm -hmm. clever move, but it took some time. Um, I'm not sure that I know why, uh, because uh, maybe maybe it only ind indication that uh, they play also many other openings, mm -hmm. and that's maybe not what they were not the position, or not yes. what they were expecting, yes. ne not necessarily. So they know, of course, how to play these positions, but. Uh, over the board, you want to, mm. to be sure that you do everything in the right moment. Yes, for sure. Okay, now we'll very quickly update the two games from uh, the NC World Masters, and then I think we will take our first break of the day after that. So, quick look at Vichy against Mickey, where the queens have indeed come off. Come off the board. Yes, I think we were anticipating uh, these moves. Mm -hmm. uh, King G7 uh, looks like a very uh, reasonable choice. After Queen H2, uh, Adams took on H2, Rook takes H2, and uh, now simply developed the Rook to E8. Of course, he had uh, mm -hmm. different different options, but uh, this move actually creates some. Threat, threat, a positional yes. threat, and I have for check. So that means that there is maybe time to think also for White how to defend. He can play g3, just taking control, but the, in our way would be to run away with the king. Mm. It is slightly less. Yeah, I was going to ask, yeah. what about the rook on h2? Will it not maybe get a little bit? I, I wanted to put yes. the same the yes. same question, yes. <laughs> so my, my suggestion, King F1, questionable. Mm. Yeah, so we would maybe m more likely white, white would play G3. What about move King D2 is another question. But then maybe black would go B6, oh, Bishop B7, this? C5. Yeah, and what is this knight E4? I, I hope that it will not be possible, but uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm just shocked if I am missing something, knight f4, knight f4. I thought it would maybe, but maybe it is possible. Yeah, I'm not sure how yet, let's see. Yes, no, because you we can take, take on d4, on d4. so it is perfectly legal mm -hmm. move. And uh, my king d2 is not really defended against Yeah, but it. then it's not so obvious if the king should maybe not go to d2, maybe not go to f1. I think yes. today Mickey is probably quite happy with the position he got. This is true. Uh, I Actually, I'm not really sure that I un understood everything. Yeah. Uh, the maneuver queen g1 h2 was very nice, uh, very interesting. 
but I think that Anand actually is much more dangerous mm. with queens on the board yes. than in ending. So um, uh, choosing this uh, strategy is for me uh, a, bit a bit surprising. Yes, I would be also happy if mm -hmm. Anand would change queens against me in any, <laughs> in any. In, in any game yeah, because he's so, such a powerful yes. ta tactical yes. player, uh, so dangerous with queens. So uh, let, let us just yes, check yes, yes, your yes. idea here because yes. I started to, to worry about everything. Mm -hmm. But it's at least it is without check. Yeah? Yes. So, so we may, uh, may, do, may, may do anything mm -hmm. yes, because we are not losing a tempo. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, in the other game of Dimitri Collers against Daniel Friedman, unfortunately the Queens have also come up, I was hoping for Queen H4, although even there the Queens were likely to come off. So in the no castling now, this no castling is not an issue Not anymore. an issue anymore, yes. So that that is the easiest way to solve this problem of castling, mm -hmm. exchange Queens and then Kings may stay in the center, mm -hmm. simply. So Queen G6 was taken, F4 happened, F6. We have, uh, in my opinion, we have almost uh, like absolutely equal position or very close to yeah. this uh, absolute equality. A5, I'm not sure uh, that I really like it, but it because is possible. Because the pawn is coming to dark square? Or? Yes, because if I now play A4, mm -hmm. we should always yes. guard the, mm -hmm. this pawn yeah? and then how to protect it. I think that Daniel should have some long-term concept. Maybe he wants to play c5 and then to put the knight. Mm. Because just to stay and protect the pawn with the rook, no, it's, mm. it's not uh, the dream situation. But maybe he, he is planning uh, okay. far advance yes. ahead. Uh, it's actually uh, it's not happened because Dmitry chose a totally different plan. After a5, he played d4. Mm. Okay, now we... To try, I think he tries to use the concrete mm. situation. I'm not sure that it is actually so dangerous. Let's say black takes, knight takes, and uh, now knight c5. Also hitting k4. Mm. Do we want to exchange our knight? Do we want to take the bishop or, or not? Mm, yes, we want. We, we want? want. <laughs> <laughs> we want, but may, it may not bring us uh, what we expected because also mm. other, other uh, players are here, rooks mm. and uh, other elements. And uh, actually the problem that uh, pawn f4 is heading and let's say we defend it with g4 and I was telling it would be nice mm -hmm. to have a pawn here but uh, it wouldn't happen black would mm -hmm. fix our pawns with a4 uh, it looks like black can have here excellent counterplay here on h file yes. and uh, pawn e4 also can be uh, attacked and to look at this uh, two uh, groups of mm. pawns are uh, very compact. <laughs> yes. That's, okay. It's actually very good for defense. Yes. Yeah? That's yes. good, like they're staying here in, in defense formation, uh, preventing quite uh, white's activity. So black uh, can play like this. Yeah, so a balanced position, but maybe Dimitri has to be just a little bit careful to not allow too much, too much play for black. Mm, yes, so. yes, but uh, it is tricky, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we said take, uh, so not to take the bishop, because it also drawbacks as black, maybe king goes to f d7 as well. Knight is active. Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, I think we will see how this one develops after after a short break when we will also be joined uh, by Luke McShane. For now, we're going to go to a break. Don't go anywhere during the break. We will be showing you uh, the video uh, interview with Pavel Ilyanov analyzing his win 
over Matthias Blubaum from yesterday. And then, as I said, we will be back in just 10 minutes with all the remaining action here from the final round. So we are here after the sixth round of our Grandmaster Tournament German Grand Prix at the 49th International Dortmund Chess Days. And we saw an impressive win today of Grandmaster Pavel Elianov against our European champion Matthias Blubaum. Thank you very much. Uh, it, you made it look so easy to win against Matthias and we know he's pretty solid. Yes. How do you feel? Was it that easy or is it just... That's okay, that? uh, okay uh, my tournament situation is quite good. I decided to play something solid. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Okay, here uh, it's supposed to be about equal, but still uh, uh, easier, more pleasant to play with white because, because I have some plan and I'm not sure about black because mm -hmm. black is a little bit passive. Yeah, I can push uh, on the queen side. Okay. First of all, sometimes maybe for my plan. Uh, but okay, uh, let's. And is, is G for 95 also an idea here? Or? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Okay. That's why maybe he took on F3. Yeah, I'm not sure about that move, but I mean, of course, possible so takes takes. I think I even played with black something very similar with Dingler and uh, at some point, oh. but I think I had a better version. I, I don't remember exactly. And that game ended how? I ended in a draw. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and uh, yeah, knight vg7. Okay, at some point, uh, I'm not sure already about bishop d6. I mean, castle before bishop d6, maybe five immediately. And then at least uh, I have no time to to move my knight to b3. So knight d2 okay, is knight not, d2, d4, yeah. not possible, yeah, of course. So at least uh, I have no time to move uh, my knight. So maybe maybe I can play knight a3. Uh, and uh, okay, here of course knight on a3. Uh, it's worse not than so B3. not yeah. so well placed, yeah, of course. And now, of course, bishop d6 also possible, transferring to the game and a uh, better version for black. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> he played immediately bishop d6 and now I got the time to, to transfer my knight to b3. It looks like here already I'm very much uh, comfortable. Okay. I, mean, I have a pleasant edge. I, I don't know how much, but <coughs> looks like I, I like it very much, of course. And your knight uh, wants to go to this yeah, knight square, to a5. a5 yeah. Oh, yeah, if he plays passive, I can uh, also push e4 at some point. And he decided to uh, to, to get some counterplay, to try to get some counterplay by playing this. But uh, <coughs> the drawback, uh, drawback is, of course, very obvious that uh, pawn on e4 also weak now. Okay. <coughs> okay, my, my bishop a little bit passive, but on the other hand, it's not so easy to hold the pawn. So basically you wanted now to win, win the pawn at some, yeah. some position and now you went for Okay, rook fd1, uh, rook e8, uh, takes, takes. Okay, I have some choice always and uh, yeah, I played uh, c5. Uh, no, I played bishop, uh, rook d4, I guess. No? I don't know. <laughs> really? <laughs> the, Ah, but because here uh, we have some uh, some troubles with broadcast. Ah, okay, maybe it's, uh, uh, it's some, wrong in the broadcast did, because some, we made somebody, some some somebody uh, uh, okay. prob probably uh, inserted by hand. I yes, guess, yeah. yes, we did. Okay, so maybe the game continuation uh, so was like yeah, that. it yeah. was that. Uh, in fact, I played this, and then uh, yeah, here here it's yeah. This is the position from the game. I think this is already very difficult to, to hold okay. because black, black is too passive. And because of this weak pawn, yeah? Yeah. And... Uh, if, white, uh, if black wants to go e3 yeah, at some position, there's always e3 some tactics. Always yeah. F4, yeah. Unfortunately for black, I have also another idea, rook d6. Rook d6, uh, here I play it. Uh, this is very annoying for black because rook c6 is uh, a big idea. Okay, we can show h5, yeah. take c6, very nice. Yeah, rook c6 is very annoying and he has to defend and this is very annoying, rook e6, another concession maybe. Yeah. But uh, on the other hand, I wasn't sure, rook d4, rook d4, uh, king e8 he played. Yeah. You repeated I, the moves I repeated once, uh, once yeah. 
and uh, I decided to take to to, uh, to take on E6 because I wasn't sure actually about that. Uh, I, I wasn't really happy uh, happy to go here um, because after E3, uh, yeah, after E3, uh, F4, of course, very natural, but. Then uh, I wasn't sure what to do about knight d5. Uh, after knight d5, okay, I am should be better here, but on the other hand, uh, maybe he can get some counterplay because then mm -hmm. he maybe can play knight c7. Mm -hmm. Or after, uh, instead, knight d5, maybe immediately knight c7. So, okay, I decided to, to go here and just to grab the pawn because uh, yeah, of I course my initial intention was to grab this pawn just for free without mm -hmm. uh, spoiling pawn structure, but I <coughs> finally decided uh, it should be also good enough. And it, 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 it it's indeed uh, turns out that uh, it's good, but the five, I think it's clear mistake because... But that's also a beautiful move, yeah, to activate the bishop to h Yeah, but uh, here I, I have to show some technique in any case, because mm -hmm. instead uh, five, f after the five, I think it's surely lost. Uh, and before before I wasn't sure that it, it could be so easy. Because even knight e5 I wasn't sure, but maybe also h5, something like h5. Yeah, first rook e4, uh, I wanted uh, to play f6. And here, okay, I, I was calculating, I wasn't sure. I have bishop h3, I have knight c4. Surely I'm, I'm better, but uh, it's still, I mean, I wasn't sure, yeah. Okay, yeah, one pawn up, but spoil pawn But after f5, yeah, to do. yeah. He's, he's making uh, more weaknesses uh, by playing that, and I think bishop h3, this is surely winning now. And, because uh, of this central break? Yeah, of course, maybe he wanted to jump with knight, but... To the, to the squares for the knight. With knight, yeah. but I mean, uh, black... Like is uh, too passive anyway. Rook on b8 is mm -hmm. stuck, and king f2 is yeah safeguarding all these squares. So yeah, I, I think it's lost, and uh, looks like I mean I played good enough here. G4, <laughs> I decided to, to win by fourth. Uh, <laughs> good decision. <laughs> he can take. Uh, he can take because yeah, of because uh, at first I didn't see G4 because yeah, but only here I lost rook e3 and G5 I have. So after king f6 king, says king g5, g5, and, king and e6, after king f6, knight c4. Knight c4. So I'm just winning, winning the knight. <coughs> and uh, yeah, I decided to win by fourth. And I think, uh, I mean, of course, this is absolutely winning. Uh, uh, just, yeah, and ju here I have a nice choice, I guess. But uh, I think it just cannot be, it can be, not winning because I mean I have too many trumps in yeah, my position. Yeah, yeah. True. I have better structure and king is not a power in the center, but king on in the mating net. And I mm. think, I mean, it's just uh, over. What what is the mating threat now? Uh, a mating threat. Okay, rook a4 actually was my, one of my ideas. Just quiet move. Okay. That's why I played rook a3. <laughs> That's why I played rook a3. Also, of course, uh, it's not necessary to play rook a3. Yeah, but that's a beautiful point. Yeah. yeah. And then mm -hmm. I just won by force, not by giving mate, but uh, by. Again, uh, threatening rook d4 yeah. and knight f6. But because of decisive threats, uh, because I'm just winning another pawn. Yeah, knight f6. And, and yeah, and then just over, yeah, of course. There he is gone. So impressive strategical game, I think, for our viewers. And uh, it seemed to be that you are pretty happy here in Dortmund. Last year winner, this year one round to go, and you are in front. Yeah, yeah, looking good here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Pavel, thank and good you luck much. for tomorrow. Thanks.
Hello and welcome back to the Dortmund Sprachkasse and Chess Trophy and we are delighted to be joined by Grandmaster Luke McShane. Luke, welcome. Thank you very much. So you're the first guest we've had whose tournament is actually over. Uh, you played your, your six games and I know it didn't end the way you would have wanted to yesterday, but uh, it was, I would have to say, the most exciting game we saw in this event and maybe that's a, a good place to start if you could give us your thoughts on, on yeah, that. Yeah, th thank you. Uh, um, of course I was uh, disappointed um, with, with the way the game ended, but um, but I, I was uh, uh, I was quite pleased with the game. I thought I played a um, uh, well. You know, we both we both played a very interesting game, and um, uh, finally there was uh, uh, well, it was me who kind of um, uh, uh, cracked first in in time trouble. But uh, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, I also had my chances, and uh, um, in general, I, I, I'm 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 very pleased with the way I've played. Uh, Played my games here. I think, uh, on on the whole, um, I've uh, had had a lot to be happy about. So, yeah. Well, let's talk about that. You finished on uh, plus one in the yeah. end. Do you have a, a favorite game, or tell us a bit about about the games and the, the performance? What you, you um, well, actually, I, I think probably my my favorite game was uh, was my first round um, uh, where I beat uh, Matthias Bluebaum um, uh, because uh, I I think I. Uh, uh, well, it was it was not um, not a game with a lot of uh, fireworks, but I, I I think I won in quite uh, good uh, uh, strategical style. So I was I was uh, rather pleased with that, um, and uh, I also played a, a quite good game um, against uh, Erwin uh, Lamy, um, uh, but uh, uh, well, um, it wasn't quite enough. Uh, wasn't quite enough, but still, I, I think uh, I, I had. Um, uh, uh, I was also pleased with that that game as well. So, um, yeah, I think those were my best best games of, of the event. You mentioned the game against Matthias Blumer, and of course, we have a, a world leading expert, Dr. Petrov, here with us, Arto. And I know Arto that you were uh, very impressed with that game. I don't know if you have any any questions about that. It was a great game, first of all, and also congratulations to, to this tournament. It really was a very powerful performance, and it was a pleasure, actually, to watch your games. It was always something was going on interesting. It looks like um, maybe only against Rasmus you, you were un, uh, under the pressure. Yes. Um, uh, I, uh, that was a, um, a game which... Uh, yeah, there w it, it was very high, uh, very high tension in the in the middle game, um, but actually, I think uh, yes, objectively, it was probably not so good for me. But I think during the game, we we were both uh, uh, rather unsure what was what was going on. It was it, 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 at the board, it simply felt um, like a bit of a uh, a bit of a mess. Um, so uh, uh, it was. Um, and there was some. There was a, a, a funny um, double uh, double blunder um, uh, around the time control, where um, I uh, played a move which I thought was uh, thought was winning, and he um, he believed me, um, even though it was actually losing. And uh, so, yeah, there was uh, uh, it. It was kind of funny, but sometimes that's that's the way it goes. Um, uh, but. I had the feeling that you tried to to beat Diak in the last round uh, because you had also interesting position. You found yes. a lot of good moves, and sometimes it, it's difficult to to stay objectively after finding so many interesting uh, ideas. I I well, I wasn't. I wouldn't say that I was trying to um, uh, to beat him from from move one, um, uh, but. Uh, at some point, um, probably move 30, 35 or something, I, I thought uh, that I had an opportunity to uh, to win the game, um, and uh, and I went for it. But um, unfortunately, there was <coughs> a small hole in my calculations, um, and actually, still my position was uh, not not so bad. Um, but uh, I think I was. Um, uh, a little bit upset by uh, the, the 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 surprise, and um, uh, when you have only one minute left, it's mm -hmm. a little bit difficult to to recover. So, I, I, I guess my my intentions were not uh, uh, 
completely aggressive, but uh, if, you, if you give me some, some chance, I will try to take it, of course. Can you tell us which moment this was that you're mentioning? Yes, uh, when I played, uh, when I played uh, rook, rook c8 to c3, um, putting some uh, pressure on his bishop on d3, and then he played bishop takes b5, and I played rook takes g3 check, and he played king h2, and I played d3, and uh, th there are uh, a huge, huge number of tactics on the board, and I, I didn't really have time to check very carefully. Um, but I looked at uh, all the other possibilities, apart from queen d1, which was the one he played. And that was um, uh, by far the strongest move against everything else I, I, I was doing well. Um, and uh, after queen d1, then I uh, suddenly things, things change, and I'm in serious danger. Um, Maybe maybe I could survive if I was, you know, mm -hmm. um, ready for that uh, turn of events. But um, well, I was not, and uh, yeah, he, he finished me off. Quite but it, it was in in time trouble, and uh, like both uh, had only maybe seconds on the clock. Exactly, yeah. exactly, and a little bit of that was was probably my own uh, my own fault uh, i spent uh, quite a long time in the uh, in the middle game and and also in the opening but um uh, but um uh, well i needed some time to actually get into the position and understand it a, a little bit so um mm -hmm. so you know and the results were 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 okay i had a decent position so i don't know what to what to say if it was uh, bad uh, bad uh, to do that or not. I have one final question just about the time trial because uh, you said you didn't have enough time to figure it all out, which I think was a bit of an understatement. <laughs> there was really very little time for a lot of uh, very complicated, very tactical variations. So um, how do you handle yourself? You had, both of you had to play so many moves with uh, just on increment, basically. So, do you try and calculate as much as you can? Is there a part where you, where you rely on, on your instincts, or how does yeah, it...? Yeah, yeah, you have to, um, you have to trust your instincts. Um, but uh, yeah. one of the things which, you know, the, somehow everything works much faster when you only have one thing <laughs> uh, to think. I, 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 you know, it's impossible to, um, uh, to, to create the same um, conditions, uh, you know, at in, in training, for mm -hmm. for example, um, as you can uh, in uh, you know when you when you have one minute left. So you 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 can't see everything, but you can see quite a lot if mm -hmm. you if you are um, uh, concentrating very hard. Okay, well that's very interesting. And yeah, well, your opponent uh, Dirk today he is uh, fighting for first place. He probably might need the, the full point. Have you had a look uh, at the games in the uh, first hour? Yes, yes, I, I have. Um, uh, so, uh, th th well, at the moment it's it's quite a, um, a, a quiet a quiet start to the game. Let's, let's have a look at the position, actual position, and what happened last time. Yeah, we, we left it and Diag uh, just played B3 supporting. Mm -hmm on c4, rook c8, kind of reasonable <laughs> move. Bishop a3, so he started to play concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, lo looks like, and bishop d6, it, uh, it's, uh, I, I would say maybe it is too early for co concrete operations. Usually you also play very slowly before it in this position. Mm -hmm. just putting everything on the good uh, positions to before open uh, dares to play a5 and if he dares to play a5 it usually it's not so good but here he he somehow provoked provoked this yeah, almost like by putting bishop to d6 mm -hmm. it was okay black now played a5 what what do you think about this change of the situation we, we can bring all moves because it makes it, it looks like almost the first so will sequence he, will he take with the i guess probably he will take with the pawn because uh, uh it's nice to create this pin and then he must uh, i guess he will step out of the pin and you can't uh, allow it to quickly in d3 exactly and then 
Uh, Actually, many things are possible, yes. I mean, the move, the move which comes to my mind, first of all, is 94, mm -hmm. but, uh, but maybe it simply loses a pawn. You can take, yes. Mm -hmm. Take, maybe take. I was thinking about rook, uh, the rook d5. Rook d5. But then you, you have a chance to play bishop c4. Protecting it. Yeah. And mm. rook d2. And then rook d1. Yes. Uh, at least uh, it is a pawn up. Mm. Yeah, maybe it it can still end up in a draw because of opposite color bishops, but mm -hmm. it's a kind of good good draw. So uh, and so just to right, explain uh, to our viewers maybe why black shouldn't take the pawn on a2. Ah, yes. So after rook takes a2, then the rook comes to, to d7. d7 and and uh, hitting, oh, I'm sorry, not so far. But <laughs> <laughs> towards f7 and b7. And I b7, hit both, yeah. both the pawns. Uh, that, that would be dangerous line. I was thinking that black holds this position, mm -hmm. but still it's a kind of... Uh, I, I it's actually, it is almost like a draw to me, because now we exchange change ah, looks in the next move, which that's, could be that's important. That's very important, I think, yeah. But uh, maybe instead of... Uh, yeah, okay. But I don't think that the, uh, Bogdan would play like this. He may probably look for more interesting... Yes. Ch uh, ch way, yeah? But uh, also, I, I, I would not be very confident that, uh, for example, if white plays b4 instead of a4, mm -hmm. After so then the it rooms. may may be different. Yeah. yeah. So it, it depends upon some nuances of the position. If I uh, maybe still get some chances here mm. to to play it for a win. So that means uh, we have to go back to this ninety four <laughs> moment. Or? We, we yeah. come back, of course, yes, because also black has uh, uh, different options. He can also take vision knight actually. Mm -hmm. Why, why not? But what does it mean? Why it probably so takes, pawn takes, yeah. queen, queen d3 for some reasons looks good. Also be better eh, for, or a little bit better for that. Eh? I, I would, I, the move I would like to play is d4 in this position. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe sacrifice a pawn and now play for example rook e7. Rook d1, and then, well, what what I want is I want to I force you to advance your pawn to d5. Um, mm -hmm. And then, and then blockade and it in, exactly. in clever, some, exactly. some clever way. That also looks like a holdable position. I think I managed to hold something like this against Kochna. Uh, but I'm not sure if I, maybe I had a bishop on d6, so it could be some nuances. Of course, it's not really what Bogdan wants, uh, no. from given his tournament situation. He, he maybe wants to, to fight for, for the tournament win. Uh, He's so actually captured uh, on d5 with a pawn. Mm -hmm. at, at least it is a little bit more fight here. But uh, it's, it's a difficult, I think it's a difficult psychological situation for him, because if he wants to... I mean, really, his position probably doesn't uh, doesn't justify uh, fighting for the win at this this stage. But mm -hmm. he will have to, if he wants to do that, he's going to maybe take some some real risk in this in this position. So probably the best types of moves are are ones which uh, will lead to uh, equality. Mm -hmm. What do so you think he should do in view of the tournament situation? Would you be willing, if you were in his shoes, to take some risk, or would you be satisfied with what probably would mean second? Uh, it's a tough question. I would. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I would probably sink into thought, and if I if I found some half idea, I would try it. But uh, um, but uh, I might not do a wise thing. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> 
I, I would think it's maybe better to play according to position, yes, mm -hmm. and you never know what happens in the other game, and uh, just play with black, play good chess and yeah. solid moves, and that's it. Well, I think you're right. I think we should check in uh, with Pavel Ilyanov and see how how so he's getting on. So Queen D3 uh, was the last move. Uh, that's what we were anticipating. Can we <coughs> say? Very little advantage for white uh, because of the better pawn structure. And that that could be ex extremely interesting game. Uh, did Pavel play, uh, play down a prophylactic <laughs> move? So we started to understand his style of uh, play. Uh, because look at this moment, it was the last moment, and we were also discussing the, this possibility. Uh, just prophylactic move, because maybe the idea of David, uh, last move of David was Queen B3, mm -hmm. and the idea was to try maybe to activate A pawn, uh -huh. and Queen C7 may stop it, uh, because now on A4, A5 is, is possible. But uh, of course, David played different. He played king b1, yeah. putting the rook on c1 m m makes a lot of sense. King b8, rook c1, knight came back, knight f6, it's again is very reasonable, and rook c2 came. A very nice plan yeah, by bringing everything on the king, uh, queen side. And then maybe something happens, yes. Uh, so mm -hmm. But has he, has he also played knight back to c8? He played knight back to c8, so okay. that's not the most obvious move. Eh? No. Um, and what is his idea when he plays knight c8? Is he, is he, I can see that maybe he wants to put the knight on d6, which could be a good square, or maybe he wants to play queen b6 to offer an exchange of queens. Yes, but I'm not also I'm not enthusiastic about the move, uh, honestly. But w w did he had an alternative, or maybe the, the rook a hc1 was so unpleasant, and then knight b5. What should he do then? Yeah? So that is a question. And if you move the queen, then a4, a5 is mm. coming. Knight d7. What what do you think? I, I, th I think that David has initiative, yes? It, yeah. It's actually not, yeah. a, it's, it's not an easy defense. Yeah. Um, so he will... Yeah, the problem is... Actually, in fact, knight d7... Um, already, uh, you have a problem. Uh, where to, where to after, move after, Yeah, after exactly. The queen is... Let, let us show it to our spectators. So that's how that's Grandmaster can lose the game <laughs> quickly. Exactly. Um, so this shows the downside of, of putting the queen on c7, that, that there are always... True, but it should be some uh, follow-up. Yeah? I don't believe that it was such a bad move. It, it, yes. will, it will ruin my faith in prophylactic <laughs> Well, actually, we had uh, a couple more moves. So after knight c8, yes, David played knight a4, and I the knight I came back. I don't like ah. it. I don't, but I don't like it. Okay, he wants to exchange it. Yeah, he wants okay. to exchange. Yes. Well, that that makes sense now because if you play knight c5 to avoid the repetition, and they go then with this knight. Exactly. Yeah? Of course, because going with other knight would be another way to lose it. <laughs> no, another way to lose it quickly. So we need to to choose the right ways. Okay, that that is a kind of clever chess, but that of course also means that Pavel tries to make it solid, tries to defend it. Um, but I'm. Still, I'm not sure that it is the main, uh, that is the right consequence, but okay, the knight c8 is the right move, I'm not sure. But now, uh, David 
has to find there. Yeah. Yeah. He has to find the, the, how to do it. Mm. Do you uh, think there's any chance he will think of repeating or not? No Did way. <laughs> I also. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yeah. I, I, uh, sorry, I <laughs> answered for. <laughs> <laughs> He is a big fighter and uh, was he will he will lib uh, he will maybe sacrifice something but not to repeat <laughs> them, so, I would say. Roxy one. Knight C5 first. Knight C5 first, knight goes and Roxy one. Mm. Ah, but Roxy one instead of knight C5 was, was interesting. It was because interesting. If you if mm -hmm. in that position after rook c1, knight takes a4, then it's a question if you can play rook takes c6. And uh, maybe a good question is queen e7. Queen e7, because you have to defend the knight on f6, and now rook c7. c7. And we have a very messy position. Big mess. A big mess. But probably I would be happy to be white in. Yes. We still have a pawn, yes, we still have a yeah. pawn, and no squares for the knight, and so we, we can play this. And rook c1 uh, is, is on the board. Oh. It, it happened yes. so, very good, okay, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what is, uh, what is Pavel going to, going to do? Pavel is a little bit under the pressure, maybe to play knight. D7 now. Mm -hmm. The last time I tried it, white knight was on C3 and <laughs> it was blundering to knight B5 horribly. Uh, so, uh, but, but now it is okay. Yeah, I can can do it. You could you could uh, consider playing uh, knight C3 any anyway. Yes, but then my idea was to, to, to go to queen d6. Yeah, I'm much more happy because a4, I can always play a5 now. That's what I want to have. I'm not sure that it is so uh, secure, but doesn't well, look so... One, one thing I can do is I can try to play, for example, knight a2 with the idea a very simple idea just to play queen c3 and take uh, take the pawn it's a bit uh, a bit cheeky but yes, but i still can take this one mm -hmm. but you take on the e5 mm -hmm. yeah. hoping to profit from some some, some extra weakness mm, yeah. it's actually good good change yeah, for right uh, because you have attacking possibilities so it's not so simple uh, for for me to to play now. Maybe you could be you you would have uh, after queen after knight a two in that line. Coming back again. Yeah. Mm, and then play. then black could play king c seven, which is a little bit. That is very funny move. Yeah. But but you want just to protect the exactly, point. and then the problem that white has is that now all the pieces look quite quite stupid um, so it just a f very few squares where all white army is mm. uh, concentrated eh? so we need a little bit of space mm -hmm. king c7 is a great move uh, let me also try to make mm. semi interesting move for uh, the change Maybe maybe now on the C three. Okay. Now I guess I have to run with my king. King, maybe B eight. Maybe back to B eight. So that's major difficulties. Yes, they have to organize attack in such a situation. make another tricky move but that's the last one I, uh, i'm going to take the whole whole line back <laughs> <laughs> i think you may even play queen retreat, retreat the queen yeah. yes 
But we have, we, fortunately, we have a move, and so we don't need. Uh, that's actually knight f d7. I'm not happy that I am guessing so moves of Pavel because he should play better chess <laughs> than me. And uh, he was my tournament favorite, so I'm, of course I'm a little bit for him. Alvar David is such a nice person too. Yeah, he's, he's played a very, a very impressive tournament, Pavel. Yes, yes. And he said that he was not uh, really preparing for this. He was like working as a coach, uh -huh. and at the same time, to play at such a level, that was a, very nice to see. But again, I think that David would would do everything just to spoil uh, this event for mm -hmm. for Pavel. <laughs> Okay, we will see, because also in the other game, uh, Dirk has gone for knight e4, so it could be that his okay. chances to at least play for a winner are gone very soon. And let's check in with the last game, uh, Rasmus Fane and Erwin Lamy. Mm. Yes, that was a, uh, complicated stuff. You you should know this, yeah, because you're coming from England. <laughs> yes, did you have to study English opinion? Um, no, but... Uh no pressure. Uh, no, no, pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it it uh, somehow nearly all of the um, English players play e4 on, on move one. Actually, mm -hmm. um, you know, Michael Adams, Nigel Short, mm -hmm. uh, uh, are, are you know most of the time thought of as uh, players who, who who play e4, and uh, and that uh, that has also I think. So why, why do, do they call it English opening? Uh, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. They uh, probably should rethink yeah. it and just ah, take it. Maybe it, it because of Staunton or some, yeah. some guys of it, uh, really old times. That would be my, my guess, but I, I, don't, uh, I, I don't know. So this Staunton was not only inventing modern chess pieces, but uh, actually was a great player there. Yeah. So. yeah probably responsible for English opening. So let us see what happened in the last moment. We, we talked that uh, this is a fight for uh, d5 square, but Erwin uh, finds uh, some interesting countermeasures. Mm -hmm. He pre uh, prepares the move uh, b5 as okay. a counter action. And that's what happened now. Uh, we see that white was waiting with the move knight d5, not to lose control over the square b5. Now, after knight d4, black is ready to play b5, so white played b4 immediately. Black took, and it looks like solving the problem. So looks like almost na almost na nothing now. Huh? Yes, uh, it looks uh, uh, it looks quite quite dry. I think uh, very likely to exchange some some pieces and uh, just get quite a quite a sterile equality. Quite. Yes, it would still have this formal control, or maybe control for a while on the, over the square d5, but there would be so many pieces now. And, and actually, I was uh, scaring maybe some of our uh, viewers <laughs> with possibility for white to play h4, h5. It is, of course, already out of the table yes, for some, some time, I guess. You need the... Uh, position on the queen side to be much more closed in order to uh, start, uh, to start some, side, some, yeah. some actions yeah. on the other side. Luke, let me ask you now that we've seen the, the three games, I'm going to ask you for your predictions and there is My absolutely no pressure because yesterday okay. we had Rasmus in the studio and he actually managed to predict all three games you wrong. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, oh, okay. So um, we, we, we just start maybe with Swane. Yes. Uh, so uh, yes. So I I think a draw is um, the most likely uh, the most likely uh, okay. result. Um, and then then uh, this is David. this is the toughest one. Tough game. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, but he went back to C3. I don't know what does it mean. Um, I think. I, I think. I think Pavel will will uh, succeed in 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 holding a draw. But I think he's. I think David will find some way to make his life difficult. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it will be a draw, but because Pavel but after is in after great fight, shape, yeah. but after after a big fight. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think um, 94, happened. 94 happened, and I expect that uh, uh, Deak has uh, uh, calculated carefully and decided that he uh, will will draw um, this position without too much difficulty. So mm -hmm. and put his hopes on David Navarro. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, so yes, um, three three draws is my. My prediction, but I, I'm expecting some some fireworks in uh, uh, Navarre Elianov. Let us move to no castling chess. Uh. And yeah, actually, Arto, I have a question for you. Well, for both of you, really, because uh, during the break I received a message from a friend who told me he was very much enjoying uh, your commentary, Arto, and he wanted to hear your thoughts uh, on no castling chess. Now that we are coming. To the end of the event, if you could both let me know what did you did, what did you think of no casting chess? It's actually interesting form of chess. Only the problem that they still uh, uh, had to prepare for the game using computers and all this. If it would solve this problem of computer preparation, that would be a, a very interesting alternative. And look, um, I. I think it's. Uh, I think it's great. I I, I I am um a big fan of of that form of chess. Um, I played a a match at the London Chess Classic. I played two games uh, against Gawain Jones, and they were both very interesting games. I think we won one game each. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so uh, I feel very, you know, very positive about it. Um, I think. Uh, uh, actually, I'm not sure that I that I uh, uh, agree that the um, possibility of computer preparation is um, uh, a problem because I, I think what we're seeing is that um, everything is so uh, unexplored um, in the in the opening uh, that. Uh, uh, very quickly, the the, the the players are getting into new situations. Um, uh, so even if they, I'm sure that they they did some um, preparation uh, uh, before the games, but uh, they just can't uh, can't predict everything. And um, uh, so I think it's it's doing exactly uh, what it mm -hmm. uh, what is intended to do, which is to um, you know. Give 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 the players unusual things to to think about from right from the beginning. So, I think it's it's great and uh, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we might be seeing uh, you play more no castling in the future? Uh, I would I would I would love to play uh, some some more no castling chess. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure. So that will will make it happen. Someone will make it happen. <laughs> uh, and yeah, let's check in with Vishy and uh, and Mickey. The last moment uh, we, we we saw this position after the move rook e8 and um, we should play uh, king d2 and that's what we thought could be met by knight e4 check and it happened. Mm -hmm. So there's some forced variation happened. I think that was still in, we were still in our analysis. Now rook c1. So it doesn't look like any advantage for for white. Whatever. So it continues in a normal way. It's a big, it's a big success for Adams that he managed to achieve the move c5 to kick the knight away. Mm -hmm. I uh, will show it again. Yeah. So, so if, for example, I think if white managed to. Uh, play b4 and put the rooks on the c file, double the rooks maybe, um, mm -hmm. then he could uh, hope for some, some advantage. But uh, uh, but here I think it was probably not possible because... Just situation, uh, the rook on e5 was e supporting e it immediately. E exactly, 
area. Mm -hmm. So let us put it to see how it goes. Yes, it, it is very, very logical sequences. That's why it keeps his kink in the center. And it's actually very skillful maneuvering. Mm -hmm. yeah? And A3 happened. So now there are some more moves. I'm ah. sorry. A3, can go 6, B4. B4. That means some liquidation. To In fact, you're talking about a, a liquidation, and he has left now, but a, a second ago, Mr. Filipovich was uh, spectating the game already and look you wouldn't know, well you maybe know from your own experience of playing in the tournament but very often when we see the arbiter Mr. Filipovic appear on the in front of a board we know that <laughs> a draw in most cases isn't too far away. Yeah um, uh, actually I must say that I if, if this if, I, I never noticed it in, uh, <laughs> in during my games but uh, you have a sort of tunnel vision when you're when you're <laughs> sitting at the board. It's amazing what can happen yes. you know, that you don't notice. But well one of our previous guests, I'm not sure if you remember who it was, but he said it always I think it might have been Ervin who said it gives him a sense of confidence of like okay, <laughs> it's all <laughs> it's draw, <yes. laughs> uh, what do you think is uh, Michael trying to Maybe to play for a win, very difficult, yeah? very difficult here. Yeah. Well, I, I yeah. guess that Vichy will take the take pawn, the pawn. And then Rook takes a3. And uh, check is one possibility, knight d4 is another. Yeah? Yeah. If check, what, what should black do? Run to maybe g7 to be a little bit ambitious. Because uh, now. The problem, the problem is that you don't have time to defend your king from rook. Like when I play rook a1 check, king d2, rook a2, you don't want to uh, exchange the mm -hmm. rooks in this position. You have to co come king e. Well, the problem is king e1 comes with different problems. In king c3, you can pick up Take many pawns two. here. Yeah. And so uh, probably my move rook, rook c6 or even rook uh, c7 is not precise. Maybe I should prefer knight d4. But then I could do the same, same thing. Yeah, but I then I check. can come, come back. Ah, and then also there is bishop f1, which is a bit uh, annoying. Mm -hmm. Maybe some, something yes. like this. But, uh, well, maybe this is still closer to, closer to a draw. But black has a pawn. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And uh, probably uh, Vichy would be very keen to avoid avoid this, to find uh, a more... But so I'm almost to. checkmating you, if almost. I can give you a check. If I play then. bishop g2? For example, then, <laughs> yes, that's so close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the bishop was well placed on h3. Yes, but uh, that means that, uh, okay, th still I somehow don't think that you can overcome this uh, barrier. Yeah. Yeah. And that's way. true, yeah, maybe. But uh, you can try. Yeah, mm -hmm. you will, would be pushing K pawn, run, run pawn, run. <laughs> <laughs> so is there something? I guess the question is: Is there something? No, no, no for the, the, the point is that uh, Black has rook and bishop, and uh, I think that uh, Vichy is thinking how to make a draw. Yeah, yeah. The, the most. Uh, Correct way. Exactly, and mm. maybe he's maybe he's considering knight d two. Yes, knight d two with idea maybe knight d four and take with knight and c three. So that's knight d two. I'm sorry, rook c five may not be the most accurate so under these circumstances. You could play either rook takes a three or bishop b seven to prevent. Uh, Knight e4 check. And probably. 
Do you have to take this pawn on c5? I don't see any alternative. Okay, then you take good a3. Because I thought, again, that okay, bishop g2 technically possible. Mm -hmm. You want to play rook a5? But that as well is, still is a little bit uncomfortable for, for white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, maybe she has some small problems. I'm sure that, uh, you know, 90% of the time he will find a way to solve this, but... Uh, yeah, that's what so he's easy. doing. He takes a lot of uh, thought now. He saved time before. And now, now he need to invest it. Yes. So mm -hmm. But that means there is still a lot of intrigue in this event as Vichy is only leading by, by half a point and we should check out uh, how Dimitri Colors is getting on. Actually, same question, what's your prediction for this uh, vichy Mickey uh, game? Ah, for that game, I think Vichy will, will find a way to, to, to make a draw. Yeah. Um, but this game, to look at it, let's see what happens. Colors happened. Looks, yes. looks in very good shape to me. Okay, let's see what happened, because d4, we were discussing it, we thought that white, uh, black would take on d4, mm -hmm. that's actually was our analysis, knight takes d4, knight c5, c5. so that looked uh, very plausible to us, uh, but we did not spend so much time, and instead uh, Daniel took on f4. Yeah, that's but it, it, it leaves white with very nice pawn formation here. Bishop f7, h4 uh, looks like a fine move to me, preventing g5. The only, the only thing is I would consider if it's possible to play a4 instead. Yeah, that so was uh, our wish all, all the time, mm -hmm. uh, basically, yeah, just to, to fix this pawn yeah, on a5 as a target. So the question was probably here, and then Bishop G6 putting some pressure on yeah. the four. I'm sure he. I'm he sure was considered. Consider, he yeah. considered this for sure, but okay, let us let him uh, guide us. Yes, <laughs> the, the, that was his decision. A H4 is, is basically good move, but on the same time you are right, and Black can solve his problems on the queen side and be, in between. He did it this way. And a4. G4, okay. G4. King f8. So I'm not absolutely sure about all these moves, but King f3, knight e5 check. Hmm. King g3. Mm -hmm. Red decides to keep it. Yes, why I not? think he keeps it because he can always probably exchange always it later. Always exchange it later, yes, because the e5 was a kind of best possible square for the knight, and unless Daniel wants to attack b2, but it doesn't make so much sense, you never can take it there, eh? you will be pinned, or it's not easy to take it, and white can play knight d3 if, if it is real danger. So what, what how how black is going to hold it? Well, I suppose you also have to see if white is threatening something. For example, the move I, from a strategical point of view, I really want to play g5, if I can. Mm -hmm. But I think, uh, ah, sorry, no, I mean for, for white for to, 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 to play, play g5. g5. Yeah. Um, uh, because then, you kind of uh, uh, activate your bishop, yes, yeah. which we can call solid in this direction. Exactly. Um, but you have the, the problem here that I think it loses a pawn. So, uh, mm -hmm. after... Let us see, but also black to play. Ah, black play. to play, yeah. It's actually already something happened because black played king e7 after rook okay. c1. So g5 now, so now it five would is be possible. Very tempting. Possible. Yeah. Very tempting. I don't know what comes next, but it that puts a lot of pressure on Black's position. Uh, it 
also doesn't look um, like immediately crashing, but uh, uh, a good good start uh, of operation. Maybe we can make some weakness here mm -hmm. on F6. We see the already bishop working here. Maybe we put a rook uh, to increase the pressure, and then there could be some concrete threats. That probably would, mean, would force black to play 95 uh, mm -hmm. back. Yeah, simply this yeah. huge pressure. So maybe he can go immediately like this, no, 95. So now can we profit from this changing situation or what, what can we do? Not so easy. Looks kind of solid to me too, yes? Mm -hmm. And black uh, can, if you take too early, black would always have some so counter can. chances yeah. on B, B So our impression... Looks, yeah, also very Also very possible, solid. possible to defend mm -hmm. it with black. At the moment it looked a little bit more attractive for uh, Dmitry, but we, we, we fail to see in the moment a strong plan. Maybe, maybe you could uh, try to put some pressure on the g6 pawn after g5, knight e5. Mm -hmm. g5, which has just been played. G5, ah, so knight e5. And then what I want to do is I want to play, I don't know in what order, but I want to put my king on f2 and my rooks on g3. Uh, and and, uh, and then you might have a problem to defend the pawn. To uh, attack the, the but without changing conditions. Exactly. I don't want to... Uh, mm -hmm. I want to keep that as long as uh, possible mm -hmm. because it's it's never uh, very nice for black to uh, exchange f takes g5. Um, Something happened, I think, after g5. Uh, then you'll play rook b8. Okay, different way. Different way. Now, now it is actually under the threat yeah, the pawn because rook is protected on b8 so mm -hmm. black may think about taking uh, again white can always play knight d3 and just to protect it yeah, if yeah. he wants to. Looks, looks. if it is a real threat and which is probably th uh, threat but uh, another alternative would be maybe to play rook f1 if knight b2 something happened on f6 mm -hmm. i'm sure yeah I, I think, but um, what Maybe means, for example, knight d3 double attack, yeah? mm. okay, well, that could be very ugly for, for yeah. black. So, Luke, what's your prediction going to be? We're going to let you go now, but is it going to be five draws, or is, are you uh, foreseeing something here? You know, that's, a, that's, that's probably the safest prediction, but, uh, okay, I... I, I, I think I, I like Collar's position. I think he has um, uh, reasonable long-term long-term chances there. Um, I think at the moment Friedman is doing okay, but uh, I think um, there's lots of lots of potential there. So I will predict a win in okay. in, in that one. Um, and may I see may I see the uh, the one last look at the. Uh, so this one, I think nothing nothing changes. This will still still somehow mm -hmm. be be drawn. Uh, and oh, okay, he has won a. He, he went for uh, <laughs> queen and rook ending. I see, but and this is still probably. I mean, I guess that Deach uh, uh, is 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 uh, trying to. Uh, make the claim that he's controlling the two open files on the board and therefore that's something as like queen d2 rook c2 is coming it, yes maybe. Mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and oh okay pavel has gone gone hunting he's uh took took the pawn and okay so we, we said that uh, david will never repeat m the moves he would mm -hmm. sacrifice upon instead um, Okay, and then A4 has just A4 been played. Is yeah, good. A4. 
Just say that it will be a I, result. I think thing. it will be a result, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Then um, we don't have five draws. That's, uh, that's a good, good thing. Because I, I, because, because I told I Fiona, can promise no I more promise round. that it will be no more rounds with five, <laughs> five draws. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to predict a, um, a win for David because um, uh, he uh, uh, probably is feeling no, no special pressure. Um, it will be. He, he looks like he has quite a dangerous attack, um, and uh, Pavel is uh, going to find this um, a lot, uh, a lot more difficult. I think from mm -hmm. from the point of view of the tournament situation as well. So, um, yeah, I, I, I will take a take a risk and predict a win for David. Well, okay. Luke, sorry, I thought you were gonna. No, 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 no. I was. I was going to say it's been uh, great having your, your insights and we look forward to having you back in just an hour from now. I'm sure things will be heating up even uh, more. Before we let you go for now, just one final question. It's your first time playing here in Dortmund. How did you enjoy the, the overall experience? Uh, uh, fantastic. Um, uh, it's, it's been, um, uh, I mean, of, of course I, I, I was following the, um, uh, the Dortmund tournament for for many many years, and um, uh, you know when when I was much much younger, um, and uh, so it's a real pleasure to kind of be um, a part of uh, a part of that uh, tradition as well. So I, I'm I'm really pleased to to be here. And yeah. Do you have some map of the world at home where you put the <laughs> flags? <and> Fla <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, only in my head actually, but um, uh, but uh, but yes, it's 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 my it's my first first time here, so. Um, that's of course a nice, uh, uh, a nice thing. But yeah. of course, you you played Bundesliga and uh, you, you've been in many cities in that's, Germany. That's true. Yes, um, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I've, I've played um, uh, I've played in the Bundesliga for more than more than twenty years uh, now, and um, yeah, I like uh, I, I like um, playing in playing in Germany a lot actually. So uh, uh, always always had uh, good good experiences. Yeah. Even since I was uh, eight years old, actually, so <laughs> <laughs> it was Thank my first, uh, yes, yes. first, first time playing in Germany. I remember we played the game. Yeah? Indeed. And it's, it's, it's <laughs> you tricked me and I still made it. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> well, still <you> remember <laughs> the <this> shock. <laughs> Well, look, it's certainly a pleasure having you, and thank you so much for your time. We look forward to having you back in an hour. Uh, so we're going to take a break now, and we'll be back in 10 minutes with uh, the rest of the final action.
Hello and welcome back to the final round here at the Dortmund Sprachkassen Chess Trophy. It was a pleasure having Luke with us. He will be back in, in just 45 minutes, something like that already. Uh, so, But for now, let's go immediately to this game between David Navarra and Pavel Elyanov and take a closer look because we might be in for a, a big last round shock here for Pavel. I think in uh, this round the leaders are struggling. Mm -hmm. Because they're facing a very motivated opposition, yes. is struggling in a slightly different ways. Um, Pavel decided here um, uh, under some pressure from um, from David. He decided to avoid the line that we were checking. If move Queen D6 and uh, went instead went for much more. Uh, entertaining mm. continuation queen uh, h2 and that gives white some interesting possibilities uh, so the stakes are raising uh, white played queen before and then uh, Pavel simply took the pawn. Mm -hmm. it is actually one of the ideas in defense uh, just to raise the stakes, to take material, um, and then now we play for all three possible results, because it also black could win this game. But I, th I think this uh, suited uh, David, David mm. who's actually a very creative player and is ready to take the risks. He was taking maybe too much risks. Uh, before, but here it is justified. Uh, here it is justified. He mm -hmm. had all pieces on the queen side and uh, would have a dangerous initiative. Nevertheless, uh, uh, now the critical moment, queen e6 came, and uh, David is thinking. So black operation was a little bit optimistic, mm -hmm. but if it works, then, it works. Yeah, then, then, it's then, an extra pawn. then he has an extra yeah. pawn and he may even end up winning uh, this uh, this game. But so, so far, let's see, uh, A5. he has to, to defend against A5. A5 is okay. probably almost a uh, forced move, mm -hmm. although uh, David is taking his time here. So why, why he is hesitating? Um, not. 100% clear to me. Okay, so maybe, let's see if maybe he looks at knight, knight c4. Yeah. Looks at knight yes. c4 at the concrete line. A6 mm -hmm. looks like an idea. So what if b6? Yes. So b6 would lead to a situation where the pawns are a mm -hmm. little bit weak. Uh, we have here possibility to keep playing with a4 or to try to immediately to attack the pawns, something like this, and then pawn on c4 is handling. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, I, I, and honestly, I would be very scared to have such a position against David mm -hmm. uh, because he's very dangerous. Uh, attacking player, in my opinion, and uh, he, he would, if there is some possibility, he would certainly find it. Mm -hmm. So this is an unpleasant sit situation, so I don't know. But if not knight c4, then what, so what if the knight goes back instead of going to c4? To c8, yes. Yeah. Let us uh, think about this. White has here uh, different options. Again, he can just play positionally mm -hmm. with interesting compensation or attack. Go for mate. Go? No, not exactly. <laughs> not not for not really for mate, but, or maybe even for mate. Yeah. Because I I thought we can take on b7, mm -hmm. uh, but it is much less uh, clear mm -hmm. operation, mm? some positional operation, mm -hmm. but. Uh, since we don't have a support of uh, Luke, we, <laughs> we are running also some engine, and engine brings us to 
very interesting territory. He said just to move That's 95. That's a crazy move. Yes, but these two rooks are, would be activated immediately, and then the rook takes c6. And David has just played a5, as we were expecting. We were expecting it. Uh, this is logical follow to follow up to mm -hmm. move a4. So n nothing else was expected. Do we have some game finished? Actually, maybe we, or maybe just some. No, I left. think this is the David's board, and uh, Pavel had left, and Pavel David just left, left after. Um, yes, yeah, so the empty board. Yeah. Uh, empty chairs and empty <laughs> tables. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, I mean, Pavel now uh, very seriously on the ropes. Yes. Yes, uh, the great play also from David, mm -hmm. who uh, yes, went, went, for, for, went it. for it, went yeah. for it, and uh, he has chances in this game. And let us see how the game would be developing. Yeah. He has initiative on the king side, so it's not, of course, not over uh, yet. But and let's check in chances. maybe quickly with Bluebaum and and Deak. Just ah, I wanted sorry. just to yes, look I at that end game different. for the Yes, that's another uh, problematic game mm -hmm. because uh, I actually I, I, we, we thought uh, that knight e4 may lead to liquidation mm -hmm. and to a draw, but honestly uh, I did not understand why uh, Black took on e4 here right, in okay. this position because I still. Uh, St I was checking this position a little bit, uh, and uh, if black plays correctly, and here the best move is mm -hmm. probably simply to play rook d8, still controlling the square e4, and if bishop c4 then b5 mm -hmm. is possible. So if black would play rook d8, then opposite colored bishops That's would lead to most likely to a draw. The problem for white is that if he protects, then we play simply rook d5. Yes. Now, black is eager to exchange yes. all rooks, and that's simply not enough to, to win this position. Mm -hmm. Extra pawn would would be blockaded by the king, mm -hmm. and um, it will be draw, easy draw. Instead, they um, went for a much more complicated ending which we also thought should promised him some drawing chances, mm -hmm. but... Uh, not so easy. Not so easy no. anymore, yes. Pawn is a pawn, and... Uh, <laughs> That's true. Yes, and uh, of course, the technical part may be difficult, yes, because uh, for, for the following reason, because uh, four against three in the rook ending is this draw. Mm. But so far we have queens, of course, yes. that makes it more complicated. And we still have some pawns on mm. the queen side. Mm. Not everything is exchanged, so uh, there is a good try for Matthias. He may go for full point mm. here. I mean, there is a there is a, a chance that both players who are fighting for the tournament victory, Dejak and Elianov, that they might both both lose. At least they are under heavy pressure mm. from their opponents. Very interesting mm. situation. Uh, another game looks like uh, close to a draw, but uh, uh, let us see. Yes, it, the, this position looks like a draw. Yeah, yes. Alvor White uh, is trying to make a little bit of pressure, but uh, shouldn't be enough. Uh, let's see, let's how, see how, we got how we got there, because in this moment where we saw B5, White took on b5 and played knight d5. After exchange of some pieces, knight also went away. So many pieces were exchanged and uh, it goes towards the equal position. Black played now rook c8. Okay, also, also possible. Maybe he wants to protect the pawn in, if in case of necessary. Yes, Alvar, I don't see immediately why what, why, what the rook is C5. doing. Yes, what what could be alternative? I, I, if I would 
choose, I would maybe will be thinking mm. about Rook, Rook B8, honestly. But okay, Rook C8 was played uh, just a slight, uh, slightly more pleasant for White, uh, who has some pressure at the moment. But very but, equal. But should, should be equal, should, should, or should be draw after. Yes. Okay, so let's go back to the NC uh, World Masters, and we can start with this game between Vichy and uh, Mickey Adams, where Mickey actually managed to put some pressure at some point, but now we will have this four versus four, and is the outside passed upon anything? Yes, I, I would say that, that still, uh, still should be a draw. Let's see how White was defending. He gave a check on uh, C6 and went back to, to C1. Mm. So we were in this analysis and here... In fact, we're about, sorry to interrupt you, Arthur, but we're about, if we just uh, see the live position, I think we're about to see a It, a it is a draw, yes, yes. Uh, yes, but uh, uh, after some yes. thought, I think, yes. I think that Michael was uh, considering to play it, but of mm. course White Knight is coming to D4, yes. so it will be very difficult to achieve something. And mm. he d he played it very safe. Yes. Yeah, he played Bishop B7, so that was basically a draw offer. Yes, because usually you are not winning the, the end game even if you have an extra pawn. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, if like three against three on the king side and a pawn at this theoretical draw. Alvor in the last years there were some very nice analysis and some uh, fine things were found. Mm. But before pawns, right, of course, has a much easier, easier yes. task to hold it. So uh, I think that M Michael realized that uh, no, no chance and now they would be repeating, repeating moves, and we, we see uh, Andre somewhere close to, <laughs> yes. to, to the board. I'm or surprised we, he's we not. Feel, we feel, <laughs> we feel he, his presence. We feel his presence. <laughs> he's uh, obviously ready to uh, fix the three times repetition. And I think there it is. Three times the work has gone back and forth. Yes, we, d we don't need, of course, to show yes. maybe all, all, all moves. They are not of uh, big interest for the end game theory. And we see that Vichy, and there is the handshake. So. A draw in this final round game between Vichy Anand and uh, Mickey Adams, which means that now uh, Dimitri has the chance. I, if I'm not mistaken, if Dimitri wins his game, he will be the winner of the tournament. He will be the winner of the tournament. That's a very interesting uh, turn of the events. Yes. But I must say that after 94, mm. Black was always comfortable. Yeah. So uh, Anand, ha and Anand had to be a little bit exactly. careful not, yeah. not to get into time trouble. Or into into Position. trouble, positional <laughs> trouble, because of rook and bishop yes. sometimes are stronger mm. than rook and knight. Uh, let us see now the chances of uh, Dimitri. Dimitri. Let's try to assess it. That looks actually not bad. Mm. Yeah, he managed to win a pawn. Yeah. And this position could be played forever. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we will definitely see continuation yes. of this struggle. Let's see how we got here. L let's see how we got uh, here. Uh, G5 and Rook B8. That were the last moves mm -hmm. that we saw. And indeed White, White played Rook HF1. That's what we uh, suggested. Rook went to F8. Knight D3. Mm -hmm. Knight D5. Right, managed to put the pressure on, on F6 yes. uh, just just in time. Uh, I wonder now why, uh, still I wonder why Black reacted uh, as he did to, by yeah. taking on D3. Because it was given up a pawn. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, Daniel thought that it is inevitable mm -hmm. or it is like the best way out to liquidate to, 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 to this uh, endgame before opposite colored bishops. But it's honestly, it's not a draw. It's not so clear. Yeah. It's not clear. And, and this is not a draw. Co yeah. Contrary to 
the other position what mm. we, we saw uh, in the game of um, Diak against uh, uh, um, Matthias Blubaum where he could change the rooks. If Black could change the rook here, yes, he would yes. be, of course, also secure, securing the draw more or less easily. But uh, there's no way, there's no way to, to yeah. change all rooks. And mm. so that means that uh, Black would be suffering for a long at, time. At least for a long time. Yeah. So how do you think White should try and make progress here? What are, what are White's plans? Yeah, that's uh, an, another good question. What, what we have here in the position is in some moment opportunity maybe to play b3 and organize the past pawn. Uh, although it looks like very speculative at the moment, I, I think it may uh, mm -hmm. be a very important factor uh, that White at some stage can play b3. Mm -hmm. Uh, one possibility is to try to march with the king on g5 and maybe some exchange sacrifice and then uh, march on the h pawn. That's one thing. Uh, basically, I think that da Daniel was kind of confident that he can hold it, draw, yeah. Yeah, that he can hold the draw here. But uh, as I said, I'm not so sure because uh, mm -hmm. there's not so many mm -hmm. space for for black pieces here, I'm not overconfident here. Maybe simply play like this, and then if rook d3, we have bishop c3, mm -hmm. for example. And white is very active, and uh, black bishop is restricted. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I would think that uh, Dmitry has an excellent chances to. Mm -hmm. Uh, level, level his score against Daniel, yes, yes. yes. it was also a motivating factor. Very exciting situation in the NC World Masters where we remind you if Dimitri wins this game, he will be the tournament winner, which would just be a fantastic uh, success for him, be, of course. It would be, of course, absolutely great result. and no, Nobody would uh, expect it, yeah. but it, it will only... Uh, Proof this mm. rule that the player who yeah. enters it, the <laughs> tournament in the last moment <laughs> yes. uh, uh, can yes. win this competition. And yeah. uh, Arthur, let's go back to, I think, the game of, of the round at the moment, uh, David Navarro against Pavel Elianov. Yes, that is very exciting uh, game of uh, Grand Prix group. And we have some development here. After the move a5, uh, as expected, mm -hmm. uh, knight went to c4. It is o o obviously the best uh, try. Uh, now uh, David decided not to play a6, Six. okay, and just took on c4 immediately. Okay, mm -hmm. that is something different because a6 was basically a good yes. opportunity. Mm -hmm. A good opportunity. Maybe he th thinks that it will stay mm -hmm. with him, uh, but uh, let us see the difference here. Yeah? In this moment, White could play a6, provoking some weakening a6, of the position. Um, Let's see what happens if Black plays b5. Mm -hmm. That is an interesting question. We may go b3. Queen d6. We see, of course, that David, he had to calculate all mm -hmm. this additional variation only uh, for the convenience yeah, that he already included mm -hmm. a6 and already uh, reached the weakening of black's position. Uh, yes, queen d6, white would take, and uh, I think c6 is falling mm -hmm. after knight a2. Promising like line like this yeah, for white, uh, and now let us compare this development with the game. White took on c4, uh, d takes c4, and white played knight e4. Uh, with in 
collusion of A6, B6, that would be a very good position. Here, black is much more stable. Yes. So he has some defensive possibilities. For example, he can go away with the king. Mm -hmm. Because if now, A6, if A6, he may play B5, protecting yeah. C4. And if I take on C4 and try to play A6 on the next move? Then it will be probably too late, because black may mm -hmm. play A6 himself. So this is much more stable position, mm -hmm. less weakened on the king side. And so it offers a better uh, defensive uh, chances for uh, Pavel. A6 might be a big missed opportunity for David. It, it was not easy, no, as we said, course. because he needed to calculate yes. uh, several additional yeah. possibilities for black. Uh, he preferred to, to play this way, but it make, can make mm. a difference mm. at the end. Uh, yes. Okay, very uh, interesting. Still, the position is not without life, of course. There is still some danger. The time is ticking down. But let's check in. Well, with Matthias Bubaum and uh, Dejak. Yes, how, how big are the chances of uh, Matthias mm -hmm. to win the ending? Uh, what would you say? It's probably still closer to the draw. Mm -hmm. The problem, again, is uh, like changing queens. I don't think it will be lost yeah, for yeah. black. Alvor, again, the fact that we have some additional uh, pawns mm. here is good for white. Mm. Yeah, it makes the defensive task more complicated. Mm. The f position four against three is more or less standard, and people uh, know very well how to defend mm. it, but include, including A and, and B, B pawns, pawns. Mm. Uh, makes the task more difficult. Mm. And here we have still queens, but one possibility for black would, would be aiming at the rook ending mm -hmm. and trying this way to increase the draw, in my opinion, increase the drawing chances. So do you think white should keep the queens on the board here? If he can, yes. If he can, if we he have can. to be careful. Yes. Yeah. yes, maybe we can just do it mm -hmm. like this, yeah. Um, Yes, that is probably a better way than to 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 go to rook ending. Yes. Rook endings they have this uh, tendency, draw tendency, tendency yeah. because some elementary position with mm. extra pawn are not are drawish, yeah. Yeah, and that gives uh, defense a good opportunities. Okay, so uh, interesting. Uh, still. The tournament situation is very unclear in the Grand Prix. And quickly, let's check in with uh, Rasmus and Erwin. Not so much excitement no. here. Uh, this almost symmetrical position with Rasmus still enjoying a little mm -hmm. bit better part. Uh, yes. Uh, having a little bit of pressure, but not. Uh, that much. Um, he needs somehow to increase this pressure. Yeah? So, mm -hmm. so if he could, uh, in a way, jump with the rook on b7, then it would be something. But I don't okay, think that it is it. allowed in <laughs> the chess rules. Yes? Just replace the queen yes. yeah, and to put the queen on b7. Also, black is to play. Uh, can if Black try and exchange some pieces? He, he can do it also. Mm -hmm. Yes, he can do it also. Alvor here, we would uh, say, okay, we, we, we have like a uh, long term mm -hmm. advantage, our bishop is better, but that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's it, and that wouldn't be enough to, mm -hmm. to win the game. Okay, so let's, uh, where do you want to go back to? I want to revisit uh, Dmitry game because I'm a little bit excited now yep. because so of we'll the importance of it. To eh? the No Castling tournament and Dmitry Colors on his quest to try and beat Friedman and win the tournament. 
Ние са два твихав, хиавта бишъп джей, трук е в лан 85, и трук е в кейдът са гуд дефенс, в който път вайт протектът тъпон E4, just taken away the possibility of black maybe to play C4 and exchange some material. So it looks like a fine move. Rook, Rook F4 also gives us opportunity to put it to G4. The big question is still remains, what is the plan there, how to... Black now uh, playing a very committed move, C6, just trying to... <laughs> Clear the air. Uh, oh. Do something in the center. Okay, that's probably good. Good idea. That's why he also left the bishop mm -hmm. on the diagonal. Hmm. Okay. First of all, don't we just have to take? We have to take. Yeah. Yes, and there's not so much to think about it. But of course, it's a clever defending yes. of. Daniel, he wants also to reduce material, activates the bishop, mm -hmm. which looked very sad on g8, but now uh, he has at least some some place mm -hmm. to walk yeah, yes. on, over the board. Maybe bishop c3 will come and white will try to attack g6. It seems to be only uh, object now mm -hmm. for attack and the question if it will bring us something. If it's yeah. enough, yes, to create. If, uh, okay, we can check mm -hmm. maybe something like this. Mm -hmm. Rook goes to... Okay, I'm pleased to see that it is not over. Uh, we have many ways to increase the pressure, also if black defends, mm -hmm. or even if king. Yes, so, so G6 it's far stays. From, I think it will be a very long game. It will one. be a long game yes. and white will be trying, definitely. For sure. Okay, so back, back where? Back to, back to Navarra. Back to maybe the most exciting game, yeah. Navarra. Um, David is probably not in his best form in our tournament uh, because He missed this opportunity, A6, six, a few moves ago, yes, and uh, the move with uh, Ilyanov is playing uh, C5 would, would be never never possible mm. if I had pawn on A6 and uh, pawn yeah. on B6. B6 yeah. So now let us try to understand the idea behind mm. this move. So first of all, what happens if we simply take? take Knight takes. Okay, I guess queen takes. Queen takes or pawn takes. Now the problem is, of course, that we uh, just won the pawn back, mm. yeah, or black yes. gave it back, but finishing the de development. Mm. Uh, yeah, now our attack is over. Attack is more or less over. Yes, or also a6 is in, in the moment out of question. Um, rook c8, possibility or to push the pawn. Mm -hmm. So we can see that black, black is sacrificing mm -hmm. the pawn. And the the pawn ending, could, yeah, we are not in, the, not in the square. No, no, <laughs> pawn end game, we are not in the square. Yes, that's what, that's how Let's we, we count, count the square yes. of h5 pawn and so, white king is yes. a little bit far away. So, so don't just take to on show our viewers, let's just put the variation on the board to show what we are talking about. Don't take on c8 because the, we are not in the square. We are up a pawn, but... Yeah, out of the square and the h pawn will become a queen. Yes. So this would be bad news. Uh, in the game, actually, David took with the pawn. Yes, okay. The, now we can examine also this uh, continuation. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the idea behind it? Knight e5, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So knight got a, got, got a good uh, possibility. And hitting f3, potentially. Mm -hmm. Also put uh, hitting here, hitting here. Yeah. It's not so easy even to find a find a move. 
the that is true. So we need to, to continue to create some threats at least. Yes. Mm. We were attacking, of course, P7. Mm. Knight D3 is still a threat. So rook D, D, D1 or maybe some other move. So now what? Uh, rook D1? Fortunately for uh, David, it is still complicated mm -hmm. position. Yeah, 95 is on the 95 board. 95 happened. 96, we don't see uh, any, any other mm. moves which are uh, uh, worth to investigate. Yes. Yes, yes and it was, and of course, played. played. Yeah. yeah, it's a big pity for, for David. Um, because I agree with you. I think it's just not his best form because he's a fantastic attacking player. We saw it in yes. many moments, but um, somehow he was not uh, able to to find the balance mm. in his game. Yeah, here also, it's still a very interesting position. I just want to see what is going on. If some obvious mm -hmm. variation will happen. Now that is a good liquidation yes. for black and uh, that's what black wants to, to see. Of course Pavel knows now, he's seeing the game of Deak, he knows that unless something absolutely dramatic happens, Deak will not win his game and uh, so he knows that the draw is enough. draw is enough, of course, yes. Mm -hmm. No, but he was trying to play solidly. Uh, I think that uh, David uh, managed to create pressure and mm. basically provoked Pavel for, for, for this operation, risky yeah. operation. Uh, and okay, David could play a six, uh, maybe with more chances. Mm. Uh, let us see what is going on. David is not on the O, o, not over the board, yeah, is left. Also, the second. time situation today, okay, it, it could become a factor if David manages to keep the position alive, but we're already on move uh, 28, so Pavel has uh, 13 more moves. But Pavel is thinking, yes, thinking, I, thought, yes. I thought that maybe David uh, is on move, no, but mm. Pavel was still thinking. Uh, difficult also to, to make a better move than the rook, the rook d7. Okay, we have to defend the mid, so if not yes. rook d7... Then, then queen, queen, queen d5 probably, yeah. but uh, th that looks less convincing nice. to me. Yeah. Oh, queen d5! He still played queen d5, yes. so we, 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 we're missing the moves mm -hmm. somehow. Why not rook d7? We, we, we are not able to see anything uh, clear. Yeah. No? No. And queen d5, usually, usually you are not doing this if you can defend In a with, yeah. uh, if you can defend with less valuable yes. piece yeah, and to keep uh, queen uh, for more active role. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that could be risky. So let us see what, what is going on. What is if rook if knight d3? Now this is a tricky position. Queen c3 and black can't take because of rook mm. takes d3 and important that white queen still mm. looks at this direction. So what is you going know, I on? just realized, unless I'm mistaken, even if Pavel loses and Dirk makes a draw, Pavel is still still first, yes. Still first on most wins. Because he has most more yeah. wins. Okay, yes. that, that is a little bit to, to his comfort. Yeah. Unless I made a, a mistake, but I I at think that's correct. At <laughs> least that's how we interpret. Yes. Uh, uh, I would support you also in this, it's also my, <laughs> my understanding of the rules. Uh, but of course we have very experienced arbiter, mm -hmm. Andrzej Filipovic, who may uh, 
I think he also correctly. supports us. He, 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 who actually told us <laughs> yes. this, yes. So, so we are relying on, yeah. on his competence as well, yes. What about this position? That doesn't look good at all, yeah? No. It doesn't look good at all. I am afraid that Can this... Can the knight go... What happens here if I go knight d7? Knight d7, I have very beautiful answer for you. Oh, wow. And trick is that... Very uh, nice. Yeah, checkmate. The, our checkmating. <laughs> yes, our f favorite... <laughs> <Is back. laughs> favorite analysis. Yes. yes, that's what we always try to I'm find. glad I but, walked into but, that one. But we have also for our friends uh, <laughs> at home, we have another checkmate. Yeah, I know that this is maybe the most beautiful stuff yes. in chess. Yeah, this... Uh, uh, Type of checkmate. I, uh, for all my excitement, I forgot, <laughs> I I forgot how to call it in English. It's oh still I like have German, German uh, words for S, this. S, uh, how is it possible to. Yes, okay, uh, that's excitement uh, because uh, exc <laughs> we, we are not going to see it uh, in but the But now I cannot rest before. <laughs> Smothered, mate. Okay, okay. That's because you <laughs> called because there is no no yes. no squares, yeah, no no squares for the king. That's why it called this this way. Oh, rook d2 is a good. Yeah. Rook d2, but maybe not the only move. Not only move because okay, let's say some other possibilities. Mm -hmm. White can play e4. Black goes queen to c6. And now white can probably regroup if rook d1, because we still have to go away from 93. Yeah. This looks also interesting for white. So the, he has several possibilities. Uh, I would say a little bit unexpected chance yeah. because Actually, on our analysis after rook d7, we, we are much more anything. calm. Mm. Yes, we haven't seen anything clear mm. because, uh, again, we, we can probably show mm. the idea that black can prepare this operation mm. knight d3, knight takes c5 with total liquidation mm. of the forces. Something like this may happen, and in this moment, Knight takes mm. c5 goes. So we are we're not expecting queen d5? No. Okay, let's see anyway, even if... Let's go back to, to there quickly and see if there has been... Uh, if there has been any any change in the X uh, game while Navarro is thinking about his next move. Yes, some changes Jack decided to put the pawn on h4. Mm -hmm. So he defends extremely actively. Let us see what is, what is, what was it? We, we were suggesting here prudent move queen c7, mm -hmm. trying to exchange. h5 uh, basically is a standard move. But h4 is an, another matter. Mm -hmm. yeah, h4 is another matter. The problem with the play that he he keeps queen and uh, rook. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he's still dreaming about some uh, checkmate. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yes, yes. Uh, some attack. Yeah. Checkmating attack. Let us see. It. Actually, there also at some point maybe time could become. I hadn't thought about it until now, but the time could become a small my, my problem. My predic prediction make. that it will be he will be under than one minute. Yes, uh, but he plays it in all, almost very all. Very confidently. Yes. He still plays very confidently. Yes. But this attack, checkmating attack, is not a checkmate mm. because why it can also simply take a pawn. Yeah? But uh, he has, of course, different options. He mm. may check and even take it with rook. Yes. And so this is not a good variation at all. Mm. And then I have a question, what is going on? Because I honestly, I, I think h5 was not the best move even. Mm. 
why I am thinking so this because I, th I thought that it is very important to exchange queens mm -hmm. and then we have this type of position where we may force the exchange of the yes. last pawn. And that should once again just be true. True. I mean, we we are true. not getting it in the most comfortable situation. Mm -hmm. We are letting quite to play uh, g4, but actually maybe we have time for this. Mm -hmm. And then we improve the position, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then uh, it is uh, it is a draw. But we see Matthias very focused. He senses, you know, that he has a chance, of course, and he would love to finish his tournament with a win. It hasn't been his his best event, but he's of course a fantastic player. And as we mentioned, especially traveling before traveling to Chennai, would be nice to to get that win. Yes, and we have here concrete stuff. Mm -hmm how black is going to defend mm -hmm. yeah. so it's a very legitimate question what what is black doing here all right uh, let's go back to the nc world masters have a look at dimitri colors against daniel friedman and after that we will take uh, a quick break before being rejoined by mm -hmm. luke mcshane something happened also in this game yes because it looks like Daniel sacrifices the pawn on G6. Oh, that's a big decision. We left it here. That's uh, rook B to D8, defensive move. And after rook G4, black played bishop with three. So he Very just... mysterious. He doesn't care about yeah. this one. Um, okay, I will, well take, maybe, I maybe, will take the pawn yes, after. <laughs> but maybe he wants to attack it with bishop C2. Uh -huh, yes, okay. that's only explanation. Okay. Could it so be like this? Bishop, bishop C2. C2. Okay, no, I will defend rook f3. And something like mm -hmm. this now. Mm -hmm. well, it's getting messy now. It's, it's getting much more complicated. Mm -hmm. We have to move e5, and we also have very funny move, rook f to f6, because now the situation changed, and mm -hmm. we have follow-up. Yeah, we have here. Uh, it's not so a draw. So what if black takes on e4 now? Bishop takes, yes. Mm -hmm. Or maybe is rook takes maybe a bit more? I don't know. Something like this. Doesn't okay, it doesn't, doesn't matter yeah. that much, but uh, still not a draw. No. Still not a draw, a lot no. of suffering. Yes. yes. Even, even if uh, there were some interesting ideas, Black wants to uh, exchange some mm. some pawns, but it uh, doesn't look like a draw to me yet. No. So, okay, I think we are going to take a, a very quick break now, but uh, to remind everyone, all our viewers, of the situation, Dimitri Collars, uh, if he wins this game against Daniel Friedman, he, he will win he will win the NC World Masters because the game between Vichy and Adams has already ended in a draw and uh, in the Grand Prix it looks like Pavel Ilyanov is in great shape to win the tournament even if he were to lose today which is also still very much on the cards. Also possible, yes. yes. I, I must say David Navarra and Matthias Blubaum trying their best to create a mess in the, the, the table. Exactly. The table. <laughs> exactly. So stay tuned. We will be back in 10 minutes with Luke McShane uh, for this always exciting moments before the, the first time control. So don't go anywhere and we'll see you soon.
Hello and welcome back to the final round of the Dortmund Sparkas and Chess Trophy. We're very happy to have been rejoined by Grandmaster Luke McShane. And Arthur, things are happening in this Blue Brown Bear game. Yes, it's very uh, wild uh, move G5, but, but it looks like it's already went a uh, little bit out of control after the move H5, H4. It was not necessary. Uh, probably some something happened and also time look at this yeah. one minute and so still that's 13 what moves sadly I was predicting this that we will come to this moment in, the, in this game Luke uh, while you were gone did you have a quick look at some of the games yeah, what are I, your, your thoughts I, I certainly did uh, I um, I saw that um, uh, uh, David uh, David Navarro still um, has some chances in his game but maybe he missed um, an opportunity uh, uh, to to get um, an even even better uh, a position than he has um, I I think he probably has uh, had chances still and mm -hmm. um, uh, and also that uh, uh, Dimitri Collis yes. uh, has managed to uh, now have a very a as very you pleasant. predicted uh, my predictions it turns out were <laughs> All quite <enough>. lucky <laughs> <laughs> and what do you make about uh, the way uh, Bogdan is defending here very actively it's let's say yes uh, it, it's it's very un unconventional um, and uh, 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 but but I, I I agree with Arta that uh, probably Probably something went wrong, and uh, he, he uh, perhaps panicked a little bit in in, in time trouble. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, but still, the game is. Uh, I think he's in. I, I think uh, Bluebam's chances to uh, to win are, are, are very good now. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but but the game is far from over. Yeah. They say that all Rukin games are drawn, and I think uh, we have very high chances to end up in a Rukin game. Uh, before too long. Okay. Uh, my, my impressions were that uh, he, he probably wanted with the move H4 to create some uh, situation also for White King and maybe he was thinking about Queen A1 mm -hmm. as an equalizer and probably missed the check and uh, Rook, take, uh, rook takes and uh, threatening uh, our favorite checkmate. Mm -hmm. That could be, yeah, could that's be the, the kind of thing. Case, kind of possibility, maybe yeah. missing the check on B8. Yeah. Uh, because uh, G5, it, it cannot be intention. Yeah, so it is just an accident. And uh, it just weakens the king position uh, very, very premature. Yeah. So what, what do we do? I suppose queen. Queen E5 looks like Queen E5 a nice look, looks, to me. looks serious. Mm. Rook, rook C5. Mm. I'm somehow know. curious about. Maybe it is not so simple yet. But well, the other the other question is, if you play Queen very simply after Queen E5, if you play Rook C1 check and Queen D1. Uh, do we have it? Uh, uh, what, do, what should we have? More, more we can take. Can because take. we can also always take on h4 and yes. play king g3. And after king f8, you have a clever queen h6 check, followed by. Uh, am I, am I missing something? Can we take with rook? Ah, that's even simpler. Much, much okay. simpler, yes. Okay. Good. So we we, uh, we have some moves here. Rook but d4. Rook d4 was played. Okay, that prevents the queen d1 check. Yeah. So ah uh, maybe maybe there was some other uh, intentions, but uh, let us say queen e5. Uh, what could it be? Rook rook takes f2. Could could it be something like this? Uh, may may even work. Yes. Why not? Yeah. May even work like this. Yeah. So, uh, no. so there, there were some some ideas for for black. Rook, rook and g4 could be a strong possibility. True. 
I'm not happy about our moves. What, maybe rook c5 still. I just cheat a little bit. I switched off the computer. He says rook c5. Don't do it anymore. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so was uh, maybe his move rook d4 was uh, was stronger? Maybe it was too simply stronger. Yeah. Just avoid this complication. So, what is the rook ending? Uh, it, it was actually already yeah, answered by the Ah, he played queen e7. Because okay. not so much time left to think, so queen, queen e7. But now this rook is, this, this, this rook on d4 is very strong, so uh, it seems very difficult in black's position. Probably queen f5 seems. Queen f5 is one option. Maybe he still has to play rook c5. I don't, don't believe. Can we take a pawn? I'm still wondering. Just to see how this would be refuted. Check and queen e5 check, yes? Okay, that's the refutation. Good, so we can't take the pawn. That means that... We'll Just to add, sorry, in that line after queen e5, we cannot go over f4. I guess that one. I'm sorry. In I that line something. where queen e5 in the end, what happens if it goes? If four, he takes the pawn. Mm. Mm. That is, uh, would be. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I know that Bogdan <laughs> Daniel is a very sympa sympathetic person, but <laughs> you should be support him so much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I started it, I must admit this. It was uh, my bad idea already, Queen B8. So probably he would stay on a, on a good... Okay, maybe check is not so bad, but then we need to find out so, something else. Yes. Mm. Which, what it could be, something else. We still can attack yeah, after King G7. We may go for attack, for example. By the way, I think we should go back to the game between David Navarro and Pavel Elyanov. To see it's what happened things there. Are, okay. Things are okay. happening. Mean, meanwhile, let's say just some conclusions that, that, that there is no clear way. Just we see Queen F5 was suggested. There is no clear way for for the win yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is yeah, fighting, fight. big fight, but uh, on one minute for when Bogdan. Yeah, that's not much time mm. left. So Pavel Elyanov, something else happened, not what what we expected. So what do you think about this exchange sacrifice? We actually were th thinking that rook d2 is uh, pretty strong. Simple and, and good. Yes, the problem here was that after queen c5 we win with rook d3. Ah, okay. And queen is hitting mm. the rook on h8. So that, that was the problem line and uh, somehow it was working to its satisfaction. Faction, yeah, mm -hmm. because pawn on c4 was hanging, or knight was uh, trapped somehow, uh, all was not nice for yeah, black. It, it looks uh, serious, yeah. yeah. It looked serious, but, but somehow the, the David he spent so much time and then he took on c4. Would you agree with our assessment that maybe David, I mean, he is of course a fantastically strong uh, strong player and fantastic attacking player, but that he maybe just wasn't in his best form here? I, I think um, uh, I, I think there's no doubt. I mean, uh, I, I sensed uh, I, I sensed that when when I played uh, him um, in the second round um, uh, that. Uh, I, I won um, with with black, and uh, I, I thought, well, I was just mm. quite fortunate that he was um, just in, in very bad uh, uh, form today. So, mm. um, so yes, uh, that does seem to be the case. But um, let's see. Uh, this, yeah, this game is still. It, at least, 
I think I, I guess that he still has uh, the better of of this position after the exchange sacrifice, even though it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, quite um, quite unclear. Mm -hmm. And no, it became unclear, and uh, look, look what happened. And he played a six. No? Well, this looks extremely unpleasant for, for black, but what happens if you play b6? b6, yes, that's a big question, I guess. Otherwise, it would be, uh, as you said, uh, the black, black would have big problems, but, but how about this? Is well, you, one, one idea I can, I can see is to play c takes, uh, then you can play c takes b6, I think queen Queen takes d6, which I... Yes, lo looks uh, reasonable to me. No? Actually, yes, I'm sorry, I don't see any follow-up after all. But Pavan oh, hasn't. Pavan has continued going yeah. hunting. Normally, oh. it's, a, it's a good sign that we are not guessing the moves of the players, but uh, in this case, I, 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 I am curious, yes? Mm. B6 was mm. possible, uh, and we haven't seen the refutation, honestly. Yeah? And then it, it solves. But what about the move in the game? Hmm. F3. What is going on here? Pavel is very greedy with those funds on the <laughs> on the king side. Uh, but mm. I I would guess that he would. Uh, he, he saw some problem after after mm -hmm. b6, mm -hmm. and uh, because the queen takes f3 is certainly looks terribly risky on the surface, but if if white pushes, so if he, if he if plays white pushes C7, on, yeah? yeah, that, exactly, because if you take everything on B7, then we would reach a rook end game with equal material where black has no problem. Ah, okay, the, you mean that this is what prepared, uh, we take on B7, exactly. he may even Maybe take. Although this is still risky. Maybe even, risky, maybe even hopeless, because you can take, queen takes, and then queen somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. yeah, and this this looks threatening uh, many things at the same time. Yeah, but what about c6? c6 is it also. possible? Check and just first of all, I want to be sure that I'm not blundering uh -huh. anything. My favorite checkmate is uh, happening or not? <laughs> <laughs> you have king to. moves, so I have to, to <laughs> sacrifice the queen, which is good. That's okay. It's yes. good for black. black is okay. So I took with knight on b7, which uh, probably be better move. Mm -hmm. And now, um, what is he? What is he threatening? What, what is the threat? I ask myself here. What is the threat? I think I think the threat is very beautiful. The play c6. Uh, let us say black makes some random move. He play c6. Now I beg you to go to the corner, and I play queen b7 uh -huh. <laughs> because it's nice checkmate. <laughs> And that's our speci speciality. <laughs> but I haven't has been I demonstrating a lot of beautiful checkmates okay. this week. <laughs> but I haven't found anything yet. After, after. But maybe, maybe but it is still, still working. Still, yes? it looks fun. It, it may still work, yeah, because we promote, yes, very well. well. <laughs> and if can be it, then another uh, checkmate. So we are uh, on, on the flow, yes? <laughs> Checkmate and You're continue. a man on a mission, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a uh, uh, possible idea, yes. A six so and then some. In, in that case, what I will do, instead of playing h5, I will put my king on a8. Uh, I am improve on the line. I'm sorry. That of course, h5 is stupid, but I just improve on the line. Knight d6 restricts the ah, possibility. That's Leads that's to much more yeah. simple. Mm. Uh, checkmate. So uh, we need to make a normal move, yes, for black, such as king a8, which was played. Huh? King a8 was played, okay. But that's position for David. I'm sure that he already says checkmate. Mm -hmm. Yes? And actually, if you play yeah. rook c7 and then knight d6... Uh, I don't know. I just wanted to, this to be true. 
Oh, I just wanted wonderful. this to be wonderful. true in C7 and uh, win in case. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> We're entertaining now. Yes. <laughs> but if I were uh, a bad sport, I would play after knight d8, maybe queen d1 check. Yeah, that's a very unkind of you. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> and take with Queen, yes. Uh, making uh, my idea. But, but, Sad, but, but Knight D6, you said. I, I, I think Knight D6, and now I think next. I just one. want to see if it is true. Ah, what to do. Unfortunately, here, you, I would like to try the same idea, but after. Queen b7, you play rook b8, to b7, b7 yes. and then the rook on c7 is blocking, Everything is protected, blocking yeah. all the possibilities, yeah. Very tricky. So how to play? 30 uh, seconds, by the way, oh, for oh, David Navarro. And what and happened? No, 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 not yet. But okay, he let has me to play. Let me try, let me try. Knight d6, mm -hmm. rook b8, knight b5. And now if you play rook takes c6, rook takes c6, queen takes c6, and then I want to play queen c... F Unfortunately check. it's check, <laughs> but I want to play queen c4. c4. That's what I hope. Ah, oh, but still you take the knight, queen takes b5. Something already happened, yes. Uh, that would be draw, uh, maybe not a draw, it would be draw. Yeah, maybe yes. not, but... Uh, <laughs> ah, uh, but, oh, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm daydreaming, because you could simply take queen takes c4, yes. <laughs> and there is no mate on not c7. Mate on queen e4, <laughs> I was dreaming, so, <laughs> so it is dream position, but we are not uh, checkmating. We wanted to, just to make knight c7 checkmate. Uh, David fo found another idea. He played queen d6 here. He played with two oh. seconds on the clock. Wow. Whew. What this means, that the rook c8 is coming. Rook c8. Maybe you have to defend c6. Maybe. But he didn't play. Ninety-five or what? Mm -hmm. Ninety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, sorry. Yes, but that—that's not not clear development. But yes. there was a move, but we don't there see was it. a move. We, 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 we don't I see mean, it. David is. A Queen d6 and uh, Pavel is thinking. Ah, no, Pavel made him. Rook c8. Rook c8. Yeah. Rook c8. I Let played me. e4. And e4. Uh, okay, that defends the. That defends the pawn. It's not attacking move anymore. No, 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 no. That was not a very successful attack, yes. It doesn't, it, it's, I would be surprised if there was nothing, you know. Uh, it this would be very so strange, so yes. Let, let, let me cheat again, I'm sorry. We are a little bit tired and so we are allowed maybe to cheat. Computer doesn't see much, wow. yeah, doesn't see much. So we we are also not able to to find and earlier earlier after uh, King K8 not clear this position I also mm. and Knight B7 maybe Knight B7 is not the best move that's a possibility to take with pawn mm -hmm. yeah. still that that is maybe more because pawns are dangerous still yeah, even on such situation and maybe you have idea queen a5 queen <laughs> and some check <laughs> some check yes i'm sorry but I'm, so I'm not position. able to demonstrate it uh, this time but maybe yeah no. well, for Sti example, still could, yes. could 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 go uh, i had rook c8 is checkmate yes okay let, let me show yeah, you just just for fun of this just a, a, a strange line <laughs> Just a strange C8. line that we were discussing. Can Rook C8 wins? And please always promote to Queen in such cases. <laughs> don't fall with the opponent. Don't put the Rook. <laughs> yes, so, so that was an option. Just, is there no more hope 
for anything in the current. No, bl bl black uh, is good. Yes, black is good. No. <laughs> you can take one more pawn, eh? <laughs> you can take uh, more pawn, and he, he actually, there is no big checkmate threat anymore. You can play rook d4, then queen takes c7, that's the big checkmate mm -hmm. threat, and attack on the 8th uh, rank, but I... Well, th so if you play queen takes f2, and then rook d4, what actually... What is the what move? What is the move? Uh, you have queen f1 check. For, fortunately, yes. Well, maybe, maybe not, because rook d1... The idea is no, we can't take. Yeah, that's yes. the idea. And then queen e4 is, yes. is coming. But that is that's quite difficult. When you are short of time with, with black. Yes, but white uh, even shorter time. You mm -hmm. said so just the seconds for the, for David. That's a very exciting game. Mm -hmm. I mean, if Pavel wins this game, he will win the tournament with five out of six, which would be just... Extraordinary. Remarkable. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Let me very quickly see. Objectively, we can say that probably two, two match points, yeah, but uh, he played extremely well, of course. Yeah. But this game, okay, it could be, uh, of course, any, any way. And anyway, I yeah. think he's just taken on F2. Yes. No, I, th I think he, he is good at such a situations. It's rather calm. Just calculates. Mm -hmm. Rook d4. Uh, uh, somehow we found already this, understood the style mm -hmm. of David. Yeah. But queen f1, I think that Pavel no, sees everything. I would would say, would, would guess that he sees everything. It's about it to make a move already. Yeah, green f1 played. Green there is a nice uh, counter-attacking line, for example, here. Okay, you can take on c6, of course. That's mm -hmm. not a big line. Rook d1 was played, and now uh, he shouldn't take. Yes, he shouldn't take because that is a trap. Queen c7 and checkmate. Very nice. So please, uh, especially for our young viewers, yeah, please remember that checkmate is the goal of the game. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes players like to take material, but you are winning with checkmate. So there is some uh, some thing going on here. Yes, how to continue here? Maybe White continues to create a threat. Then uh, I guess Queen, you could uh, maybe Queen F one. I would be. But this is a repetition. Yes, exactly. And and in view of uh, the tournament situation, I, I would not be... Would suggest this one. Yeah. That would be the best uh, move repetition in the tournament, <laughs> winning special prize. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't know of whom, yes, but if it is uh, the first repetition, then... It might happen, Queen E2 has it been played. It might happen. No, that would be, of course, also from Pavel, in a way, very noble think because not trying to prove I don't think it would be so I mean I'm not saying Pavel isn't a noble man but I think it's not that he doesn't want to win but no but, I think but in such a situation many people would be temp tempted to look mm. for uh, some uh, win yeah in this position I think if it were on the other side of move 40 he would be happy to spend 10 or 15 minutes to look for a win but uh, when he has a couple of minutes left, there is still a high chance of something going wrong. Mm. Um, so well, that is absolutely 100% uh, practical decision. Yeah? It's actually very a pity for Pavel because he was very close. I think he's just one move off to 
being able to repeat enough mm. because it's move 38. But he's not unhappy because I think he saw that uh, he may be even in mm. big trouble in this game. So he's uh, making a draw like this. It's a, a kind of noble way to <laughs> to finish the tournament, in my opinion. Mm. Although, on the other hand, I mean, he might know as well that if he's looking at the Dea game, uh, the Dea will not win. And so he no, he's clear first, yes, yeah, so first of all. I don't know so second, how much all of that not is on very, his very easy here mm. to how to play for a win. He may yeah. try, yeah, he may try how to try. We also said Queen F3 uh, solves the same problems. But what if Rook D4 in this case? What is the difference? I, I think he will make a draw. I mm. would. Uh, uh, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, unless he has uh, maybe some strange moves like Queen H3, is it possible? The problem is that uh, if I played some normal move like Knight. A5 or something. No, then it is still a risky business, Very, yes. Yeah. Uh, let's say it's a lot of fight. But if if he wants to play, uh, this is a way to to do it because takes, takes. There is no way rooks, he can make move 14 with a couple of safe moves, right? That's what I, I, I don't, don't see. I think you already repeated it yeah. uh, several, a couple of times, maybe. Yes. We started. On move 36, mm. this was one repetition, rook d1, two times repetition. Actually, actually, he can try, he can try to do it. Because I think still we are a little bit away of three times repetition. But I agree with you. I, I think he will. Ah, maybe position think. after rook d4 is a three type. No, no, that was this one. After queen f1, rook d1 is once repetition two times. It's just two, two times repeated yet. So, so he isn't in time to. Re he can make move 14. He can make move and then, but which one? Yeah, no, so. uh, so he can, he can move queen f3 probably if he mm. makes queen f2 then but he doesn't at have the board to. at the board you would not be confident that queen f3 is not a losing blunder for some reason mm. for example queen f3 knight c5 and i don't see precisely what the queen is doing on on f3 i would i would uh, uh, th this can go e easily wrong for for black Yes, and, and you don't want to get to move 40 and think for 10 minutes and realize that you, that you, you just it, yeah. Uh, yeah. threw away the, yes. the draw. One minute and 20 now for, for Pavel, so you also think we will see. No, he played yeah, queen e2. So. Uh, it looks like we are moving towards the three times repetition. Uh, I think that simply d David doesn't have time maybe to calculate if it is three time repetition. <laughs> Whatever, probably he will play rook d4. And that's ac actually, it's rook d4 is not three-time repetition. But if he plays repetition. rook d4, then it's too late to... Oh, no. And then after yeah, check, yeah. you play rook d1, and that's yeah, and probably can, yeah, yeah. three times repetition, yes. whatever. Yes. <laughs> rook d1 is probably three times re repetition. Let me ca count it. This but was I one what position. David is thinking as well. Here it is second time, and after the move queen e2, rook d4. Yes, if black would play queen f1, we mm. can claim three time repetition. And uh, David is, of course, playing now solidly. And it's understandable. And so this is at the last moment where we see but, a draw now. But this is the most exciting draw. In, in, yes. 
Meanwhile, it looks like Matthias is not renewing. Yeah, we'll get yes. to that, I we think, will, in a we second. We will check it, yeah. We will, under, unless he sees some hidden way to win the pawn on h4, maybe he sees, sees it. Maybe some rook d6, rook d4, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So there is Let's still some it. chances. I think we'll just wait here because Pavel has a minute 20 and then... Yeah, I we'll think it, it is also so important for the tournament. Mm. Uh, and Queen of One, we already saw it that it leads to three times repetition. But honestly, it, it, uh, on such a time, would you play something like Queen G4 or would you accept it? I, th I, I think... Queen G4 looks too too risky. Too risky, yes. yes. And in such circumstances, that also I think Pavel probably at some point took a quick look at the X game, so that that will be a draw, and probably he still wants to be the sole. Yes, like it is ab absolutely understandable. The move played yeah. Queen F1, and, F1 has, and, yes, and yeah. very possible that uh, Anche will uh, come to, to, to this board. Yeah. And I think David uh, asks now to... Yes. He uh, was already there, he was sitting, that's why we couldn't see and him. And of course, no, no, no objection handshake. from Pavel. Fantastic game, fantastic yes. game, yes. Yeah. Bravo to both, what, both players, I mean. Uh, what a fight. Even if, of course, if you look in Cliff Engine, you can uh, improve uh, the play, but to uh, look uh, like Elianov played that, uh, in such a situation where you need a draw to take a pawn on h3 uh, to, yes, that was, to uh, offer uh, attack for the opponent. Incredible, <laughs> and I think in just a moment, well, we can bring up Blue Brom against Dirk because I think in just a moment we will be able to congratulate Pavel Elianov uh, on defending his title here in Dortmund and uh, winning the 2022. German Grand Prix. Yeah, that, that looks like manageable position is after Rook D6 or Rook G5. Let's because go back Because you have maybe. a H3 idea. Hmm? Shall we go back or... Yeah, they uh, in the game, let us see how it's happened. I'm sorry. Of course, our uh, uh, viewers would love to know what happened after the, this position. It actually was uh, not what we thought, we thought queen f5, yes, mm -hmm. just to keep queens and uh, uh, black position is weakened, that, that would be chances. But Matthias decided to go for a pure rook ending, and that was maybe not the best way, yeah? Mm -hmm. at, at least it was proved to be uh, maybe not so much for uh, that could be the reason why he went for this yeah, for mm -hmm. that he had this opportunity but in fact it was not so scaring black now stays and g4 Look, looks like a good move here yeah. Simplifying the position, so the jack was. Yeah. So, for for example, if you if you don't play g4, if you play rook takes a4, rook takes g5, and normally in these situations you want to avoid when you're a pawn down, you want to avoid being two pawns down on one side. So it's better to be one pawn down on on, yes. on one side and equal of the other than here where you're one pawn up and two pawns down. Normally this is uh, going to lead to, to, to trouble. It, it could be much more <laughs> d difficult, of course, to, to defend this position and h4 is a target. And uh, yes, a, a very good uh, judgment at g4, reducing the number of pawns as well. And that... Uh, just leads to this position after 40 moves. And the rook d4 was played. Rook h5 as well, uh, like def defense. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is that if you try to come with king g1, you can even check it in h3. 
Is possible. Huh? H3, G3, H2, and I thought it could, could be a draw like this, yes. I think so. Okay. And how to uh, yeah. improve anything here, yeah, very, very difficult. I think we should check in with Dimitri uh, Collars. We haven't seen that game in a while. Collars against uh, Friedman, where if Dimitri wins, he will actually be the winner of the NC World Masters. And we've but, missed a lot of moves. Don't, don't worry, we will keep following this game maybe for another <laughs> hour or, or no more, because <laughs> Dimitri certainly will be trying this yes. ending. But we revisited, of course. We left it in this position, I guess, yeah? Or at least that was a part of our analysis, where we, which we saw that bishop c2 is possible. Uh, no, I think, I th yes, we revisited. We thought about move rook f3, but he actually played a different move rook f4. That, that is different. Because we thought it was was better to provoke the move c4 and only then attack on f6. Because we have bishop b4. That's how we uh, reached this position with uh, Fiona in our analysis. And he played immediately rook f4, which is less attractive actually. King b5 now happened. King c, how he managed to complicate the position. Now he start pushing the pawn. Still some chances yes, for, for for Dmitry, bishop f6, because now he has these two passed pawns and uh, wants, of course, to create a problem. Rook g7, okay, rook g7. Not, not very clear why. Yes, I would be tempted just to push. H six. Yes, yeah. just to push H six. You can always maybe do it later, and also to see what is going on here. Yeah? I, d I don't know why he uh, rushed with, with this, yeah, with rook g7, but he did it, rook g7, rook takes g7, bishop takes g7, and now bishop c2 happened. Okay, the, another possibility would be for black is to defend like this and to put on bishop on h7, which also makes sense. Bishop c2 allows for it to push this pawn. Does it, does it matter so much? Because the positions are looking a little bit similar. We are running an engine now because we are a little bit tired already. And so we want to not to blunder so much. Does it make uh, such a big difference, um, for example, this position? Possible, yes. And, and we have the position of the bishop c2, e5, d4, looks quite king d2, L looks quite similar. very similar to me, yeah. Yeah, looks very similar to me, but uh, computers, for some reasons, gives, give us a different assessment, so somehow here, says that this is a better position, so he is not playing bishop h7. After this we would have the uh, other position, yeah, so he just tries to, to defend it differently, which actually makes sense. Maybe bishop is still good on g8, mm -hmm. protecting both, against both pawns. But it, it's not, ha not happened, uh, understandably, because Bishop c2 looks like the most natural move. You know? E5 was the move in the game. Still some problems, yeah? For sure. I, I don't think this is... Uh, uh, I, I don't think this is an easy defense for black, although I must say that... Uh, al although I, I think he's going to struggle 
um, uh, actually the next three three or four moves for black are quite easy. So we can play you know, d4, bishop h7, just as, as you showed. Even if what he did was not the most accurate, it certainly is quite easy to play these moves. You play king c4 and you are threatening maybe king b3 or rook b8 or something. Um, and for white, I'm, I, yeah, I, at some point, um, I'm not exactly sure how to continue here because you need to get something get something going. Okay, rook, rook b8, perhaps. And probably you should play king c1. c1. Yes. And then maybe rook b3 to activate... Oh, but, uh, but this may... Uh, maybe bishop f6, yes? So yeah. this, this is a problem, and then h7. So bishop g6. Bishop g6, rook g7. Bishop. Uh, Let us see what is four. going on. Oh. Mm -hmm. What is this? Bishop h7. That means that activity was, was not working as mm -hmm. good as we hoped for black, but uh, that was uh, just a try for black, rook b8, king c1. Do you think it's more likely Dimitri will win the game or that it will end in a draw? I say honestly, it sort of feels like 50-50 situation mm -hmm. to, to me. Um, but it is very strange if it depends up, uh, upon this move order, more or less, yes. It's very strange, yeah. yes. So it is more concrete, concrete thing, as concrete possibilities what we uh, still have, yes. So, uh, yeah, in, in the way, uh, E6 could, could be uh, some issue and some moments and there's two pawns, okay. Maybe I could play king d5. d5, and I also have an idea. If I can play c4, c3, takes, takes, and uh, it will be mate on b1. So. <laughs> I do, of oh. course. <laughs> I, uh, I am with you, but uh, <laughs> accidentally right, d may defend against That's this. <laughs> yeah. Without seeing uh, the, the plan. <laughs> But the plan is good. Uh, just let me show the plan. Uh, take, take, and then rook b1. If somebody understands <laughs> what is going on. <laughs> uh, but still, if I play bishop, bishop g6, is it? Uh, Somehow we already <coughs> we are losing here. And just some like coordination, check, maybe. And, and then h7. h7 is coming. So. Uh, a real danger is there, yeah, and uh, yeah, this Dmitry has to, uh, or uh, D Daniel has to, has to defend <laughs> extremely well. Um, so far, it's difficult to say why this d4 is so much better. Yeah? Mm. Maybe it was still uh, just I, I would, illusion. Yeah? I would guess that uh, maybe the reason is that when you play bishop g8, it's, you're simply gaining one tempo. That so when and, and probably also prevents white from playing crook f7, yeah. which is a kind of good move. Yeah. So th that was a better position of the bishop. Uh, which it, it's, it's a bit counterintuitive, because on h7, for example, because of that mating pattern Yes, it, just saw, it, looks it looks more active. Yeah. It, it looks really more active, but it, it's probably black. is not... Uh, shouldn't be active, I yeah, should mm. just uh, defend as, a, as say, stubborn think, as possible. I think if we look at Friedman's body language a second ago, I think he doesn't look confident mm. at all. That uh, Well, I think he expects maybe t the position to be a draw at some stage and yeah. uh, doesn't see it now. Yeah. Maybe we can very quickly check in with a game we haven't seen in a while. Uh, Rasmus Fane against Erwin Lamy. Mm -hmm. And then I think we will 
We Life almost you know, almost forgot that it, that it was <laughs> exist <laughs> because of so, so much excitement and <laughs> on the board of David Navarre and Pavel Elianov. Let us just show our viewers what was going on. This position is still uh, look very drawish to to us, uh, and we came. Here in this moment, Queen A8 was played. Queen A2. I, we were talking about this reverse. Uh, where it, they should put Rook on B7. Unfortunately, it never went this far. Unfortunately, for for right. But now exchange and Rook E8. It, is, it was still some kind of pressure, yeah, because mm -hmm. d6 is weak. I, I wonder how Erwin was able to hold it so easily. Uh, it's only one weakness, Alvor, yes? so that was helpful. Trying to organize some, some weaknesses on the other side, but was not able to prove anything here. And here, big relief for black d5 mm -hmm. happened, which actually normally would bring probably the peace yeah, uh, in, in, in this chessboard, but uh, due to this special situation and also maybe this rule that you have to play, so they keep playing. Actually, how do you like the the rule here that uh, you weren't allowed to offer draws at any point? Uh, well, uh, it was fine. I, I, th occasionally, there are uh, situations where you would you would offer a draw, but uh, uh, in general, I in general I uh, like to like to fight. Uh, for, for, for quite a while, so I didn't find any, any problems at all. Um, and it's not so so bad. Yes, um, I rem remember very strange game I played against Boris Gelfand in Linares. I, it looked, uh, from my perspective, looked like a very boring draw. It was a really correct draw, but uh, Later, one of the spectators, he came to me and said it was very interesting, he really enjoyed uh, watching. <laughs> I thought, uh, why? Uh, <laughs> it was not so interesting. But then when I realized that the problem were maybe easy to solve, but uh, it was still could be interesting to see how mm -hmm. how grandmasters are solving these small problems, mm -hmm. which might be not that obvious. Yeah? Because at some stage, Boris sacrificed the piece for two pawns, and these two pawns were running, and I have to give up my pieces for this pawn. So it was some, uh, some intrigue. Uh, so it, if it, even objective evaluation was always equal position. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, I must admit, I, I yes, it's uh, something you can admire actually very much when somebody finds a, a, a neat and simple solution to uh, the problems, even if that sometimes means that the game ends in a draw. That can uh, it, some sometimes those things are very uh, aesthetic actually. So, yeah. In this game, I guess we don't expect to expect too much to happen. I. Think well, you know. I'm I'm sure that the position is is equal, but still, the game is not over. I mean, would you feel comfortable as black here if 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 Magnus Carlsen was your opponent? If you're asking me, the answer would be no. <laughs> <laughs> the answer should be of course. <laughs> of course, that means that uh, we did something right in our chess career. Yeah? <laughs> if our opponent is Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> no, but but um, uh, seriously, the ga the game is is not over because I I don't see any active possibilities for black whatsoever. No, he just has to stay and uh, say this is a fortress. Yes, but for white, I have one idea, which mm -hmm. is to bring my bishop 
slowly to the f8 square. And uh -huh. if I can trade the bishops, maybe then the f6 pawn and the black king could become a little bit weak. So, so do you want to exchange the defender, and let's put this piece, and then to attack f6 square? Yes. That's the plan. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, speaking of the eight, f8 square, I was wondering if I, as black, if I can somehow get my rook to f8, like get the queen to d6 and rook f7, rook f8. But I don't know if new problem. Well, first of all, I don't know if I can achieve it, and second of all, I don't know if new problems will arise. That's that's what. You, that's why these these situations can be, I think, mm. very very difficult, uh, because uh, absence of any mm. constructive play for for the black. Mm. Yes. But Erwin looks very relaxed. <laughs> Does he? Erwin <laughs> doesn't mind. Uh, he, he he would be. Of course, a little bit more happy to g have this position <laughs> against Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you cannot choose the opponent. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, I, I think uh, we will let you go now, Luke. But thank you so much uh, once thank again for much. joining us today. Thank you very much. It has been and a pleasure. Same question as I've asked pretty much all the players here. You're off to Chennai for the Olympiad. Uh, tomorrow, what are your thoughts uh, on the upcoming Olympiad? Ah, well, um, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, to the Olympiad. I, I um, it's always um, a very big and uh, big and exciting and you know memorable mm -hmm. uh, kind of event. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm optimistic. I, I'm also happy that uh, that I played um, some uh, decent games. Uh, here, so I'm I'm hoping that I will mm -hmm. keep uh, uh, keep keep uh, you know my uh, uh, decent level of play <laughs> when I when I when I arrive. But uh, of course, that remains to be seen. Well, we wish you uh, best of luck there, and yes, thank you so much for joining us. Thank Good you. luck at in Olympia. Too. Thanks. <laughs> and we will go on a, a short break, but we'll be back in 10 minutes uh, with the remaining action here from the final round. So we'll see you then.
Hello and welcome back to the final stages of this final round here at the Dortmund Sparkassen Chess Trophy and Arthur it's the, the last uh, round but we have so much fighting chess. In fact I think it might be the first time that after the time control we still have three games going. <laughs> still some fight in the game of uh, Erasmus although it looks now as the game would be finished very soon. Mm -hmm. They changed Queens and mm -hmm. And that's it. Yeah. So we may simply concentrate on, on Matthias Blubber and Matthias Bogdan Yes, because there is still uh, Black still has to make a draw mm -hmm. with the last move rook f3. Mm -hmm. Why it prevented uh, the move h4 h3, which would liquidate to some theoretical position, and uh, he try, still tries. I think last time. You may see something like this mm -hmm. in, in the ending, and it's not big change in the position. Just Matthias decides to put the rook on f3. Mm -hmm. What we have, we have black king cut, which is not not a bad thing. But mm -hmm. how to progress from this? Yeah? Yes. Black may just go back with rook h8. Mm -hmm. And if e4, I would say that the rook coming maybe to a8 would, would be enough to make a draw. Because yeah. black king is still very, very close to mm. e pawn. So there is no danger here. Black stays active and uh, if white pawn uh, runs uh, forwards, then uh, maybe attacked by rook and mm. king together. Yes. So very technical move would be something like rook a3 cutting, cutting the white, white king, white, white king mm. from e pawn. Mm. Okay, well, so this one most likely uh, will be a draw, and I think we're going to go to colors now, uh, which is the most interesting remaining game and. There is so much at stake here because if Colors uh, win this last wins this last game, he will be the winner of the NC uh, World Masters ahead of Vishian, and they would be on uh, equal points. But Dimitri would be the winner on tiebreak, which is most most wins. Look what happened here. Uh, we left the the game uh, at at this moment. I think that. We were wondering uh, about differences where mm -hmm. to put the bishop, uh, and actually now uh, Daniel uh, changes the plans. Yeah, he, we were expecting bishop h7, but now he, uh, he changes his plans and put, puts the bishop to g8, but in a way, in a slow motion, missing, uh, or maybe he goes into the direction G8, but he was missing some maybe options. Rook G4 was played. Uh, so what about simply play H6, yeah, yeah. Bishop G8, uh, Rook F6, maybe with uh, idea and then to, to push. So that that was also uh, very unpleasant. And just so if, if black takes the pawn, we have rook f8. We have rook f8, yes, that's a mm. trick. That was one p option, but of course I, I, I suppose that both players are mm. tired now, uh, so they may easily miss some yes. computer tactics. Yes. Yes, I, ha I have to confess that I'm assisted now with engine because it's we, been a long week we, we and a long day. Also, also look right. left and uh, we don't yes. have the uh, <laughs> human hu engine. human uh, help. Yes. yes, so we have to work with our last resources <laughs> at the end of the complicated tournament. Rook G4 was played. And we said that it was H6 mm -hmm. was possibility. Bishop E6. Rook g5, bishop d5. In this moment, we have a very funny situation, which I want to um, recheck. Mm -hmm. So yes, if we give some, up the pawn... Yes, we, we have some strange, strange lines going on. And bishop takes d4. 
Okay. So that was alternative yes. for, and because C5 is under the big pressure. And if uh, Black tries to if defend? Black tries to defend, ah, I thought Rook, Bishop takes C5, which wins. Yes. But of course, even cleaner, even cleaner is simply taken to play it. So. Mm. Very nice. So in this moment, very strange move e6. Not, but it's not hard to see at the end of such a long fight. True, true. But it would be winning yes. for, for b3. Oh, yes. yes, or almost winning for b3. But he played h6, which also That is a natural look. move, yeah. That is very natural yes. move. And black played bishop to e4. It looks to me like white won some time. Mm -hmm. Question how to profit from the situation. Should white play bishop f6 immediately? He actually played bishop f6, I guess. Yeah, yeah bishop f6 was played, then king mm -hmm. c6. So alternative to, to this w would be to try to regroup the rook mm -hmm. again in some little bit more active mm -hmm. position. For example, something like this, and the rook e1, and then maybe pushing. But we concentrate mainly on the game. It is a very uh, promising situation for colors. I mean, for colors, if he wins, it might be one of the biggest successes, maybe the biggest of his career, to win the NC Masters ahead and of an end. Uh, it will actually also uh, complements his other results yes. in Dortmund. Yes. Uh, last, last year he was Second. very very good, mm. uh, coming only just in the last round, mm. I think. Uh, he lost and uh, I lost it. Uh, looks like Dortmund is a good place for him. It looks like a really good yeah. place, and uh, I think he, the way he presented himself mm. in this tournament, he for sure will get another chance yes. to, to show his abilities here. Yes. For sure. Well, now, how do we, how do we make progress, Arthur? Very good question. Very good question. We need to. Uh, he played already. Uh, there right. was already move, rook g7, mm -hmm. black played rook b8, that looks like uh, on, almost one chance, only mm -hmm. chance, king c1 would be played now. Uh, how to, to defend against the many possibilities, that's actually an interesting question. Let's say black plays c4, mm -hmm. let's see what happens, then we can push e4. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. The further the pawns, the more Danger, of course, exists in the position. Looks good to me. Uh, Luke wanted to checkmate me. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, but fortunately, now we have the support of the bishop, mm. and bishop can come back. In d6, we still have the pawns. So it looks like e6 is a very good move, if in case of king move. But we already had a different move. Rook b3. Uh, D Daniel played rook to b3. Uh, now let us see what is going on. In this case, if h7, then of course rook mm -hmm. h3. That is the idea. Mm -hmm. So we need to try maybe to push another yeah, pawn. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not so sure what I, if I understand the defensive idea. Because there is never any perpetual, I guess. Dif no, would be difficult to see. There is some yes. some holes in, the, in yes. the, these checks. Yes, G3 yes. is a possible sc mm. escape square for for our king. So we just we will keep pushing, and I think the problem if if king D7, we can simply win a piece. Yes. Yeah? Can we win a piece? Yes, we can win a piece, and that. It it looks like uh, should be quite an easy win. Should, should be win, uh, easy win, yes. Even pick him up, those pawns. Yes. And even rook c6, yes. we can play rook e5. Yes. Easily escaping the attack of black king. Very nice. Okay, e6, so the e6 question is looks e6? like, like yeah. a winning move to us. So this is a huge moment in this game. Uh, we think that if Dimitri finds and plays e6, he would be on the verge of winning 
the 2022 NC World Masters? There may, may be some other ways, but this six looks like a straightforward yes. win for him. Do you think he, he senses it? Do you think he has seen it? Do you think he is calculating it? Yes. I see a slight tension at, at his mm -hmm. neck, <laughs> <laughs> which shows me that uh, he sees the possibility. Yeah, he still has enough time. He has uh, just under 14 minutes. Just under 14 minutes. And there's actually, well, let's see again if E6, what other defensive is just hard to. That, that's uh, it's actually very hard because uh, we, we made very natural move actually, mm -hmm. rook h3. Let us see your idea with perpetual mm -hmm. and just let us show that it, it is unfortunately not working. Yes, the yeah. perpetual, but there is a, a hole, a very small hole <laughs> in, in Black's perpetual mm -hmm. machine and White can escape with king and that is enough to win the game and rook g2 check is nothing because the uh, exchange yes, of rooks in, in, not in any move um, yes, yeah. for white would would do the trick the problem of course that these two pawns could, could, one of could, them could, is going to be a queen yes mm. so this is uh, over and there it is, e6 played by Dimitri Colors. Yes. And it he is, is now on the verge. Uh, at one hand, it is a little bit pity for uh, Daniel mm -hmm. because he actually played a, a good chess, but yeah. was, was a little bit unlucky on a couple of occasions. Yes. Uh, also, uh, not only over the board, like he was preparing for uh, a wrong player and all this uh, unfortunate uh, things happened mm. to him. And uh, But still he played very well. He uh, also shouldn't lose uh, the, f the first game to Adams and yeah. um, also there was some confusion in, in his opening against Anand. Uh, on the third, uh, mm -hmm. I think on the third, in the third round. And uh, we see Dimitri has gotten off of the board, and I think from Daniel, I can s could sort of see from his face that he also understands. I, I don't see the big tension in the neck. No. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> I, I would say that he probably. So Dimitri Collar is on the verge of the biggest success. I would say of his life. I'm sure there will be an interview with Dimitri if he goes on to, to win this game and he can say it himself. But um, It was certainly something what he was not thinking no. about two weeks ago. I mean, example. especially he lost... Well, first of all, he came into the tournament at the last second and then he lost the first game. Also. Yeah. So it's amazing. Incredible. Amazing story, yes? Yeah. Oh, absolutely phenomenal performance by Dimitri Colors. If, if, and if you would be running the, uh, some, uh, some how, I don't know how, to, how you call it, where you put stakes on the... Yes, uh, uh, odds. Odds, uh, odds looking or bets. for odds or bets, yes, yes. if you would be taking some bets and let's say the person who would say for one month ago mm. with uh, Dimitri Kolos, who is not even in the <laughs> list of the <laughs> tournament. If there's any true. chance to win no casting competition, it would, would be uh, You would make a lot of me a million. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. Yes. And put it maybe one dollar, everybody would say, what is this? Yes. What is this stupid bet? Yes. <laughs> As we can see that Daniel Friedman has just played Rook H. Three. Uh, he, and he just immediately E7. E7 has happened. Yes, I think that's almost over. Yeah. Daniel, Daniel is simply playing because he wants Dimitri yes. to show this variation and the eight queen uh, finishing, finishing everything. Game. Yes. Yeah. And that's actually how you should play, of course, because otherwise, if for example Rook G8, then. We may have this uh, defensive mm -hmm. idea with rook h1, so I think e8 queen yes. follows, and then rook e7, and 
the game is finished. Yeah, Dimitri still has plenty of time, so I think he's just... I think maybe he also needs to calm his nerves in this moment, you know? I think it's very easy to, to get excited, but he's grabbing the queen. Yes. And there it is. Uh, E8 queen mm -hmm. is on the board, and I think we might see a resignation either right now or in the, the coming few moves. I, I, I would think that... Uh, he will show... He will, would show the whole line, but we also uh, already okay. showed yeah. to, to our viewers, inclusive maybe the bishop. Yes. E7 bishop takes C5, and after maybe rook E5, he would resign. Mm. That, uh, that is the line. It's a proper moment to resign. It could also be done. Of course, in this moment as well. Yeah, so Rook takes h6, played. Here comes Bishop e7, I'm sure. Yes. I see, we also see that Mr. Filipovich is uh, nearby, which is not always a good sign. Sometimes it can also be a bad sign. <laughs> if you're the player on the losing side. So we're still following our variation, but I think after bishop takes c5, it will be over. Mm. Or maybe rook e5 after. Yeah. So he's still waiting for rook e5, and mm. then, then the, the game would be over. Yeah, and there it is, rook e5 is on the board. And yes. there is the resignation by Daniel Friedman. Wow, Arthur, massive congratulations to young Dimitri Collars, who has just won the 2022 uh, NC World Masters. I'm and not sure if he is aware of it <laughs> even, yes. <laughs> but of course, that's a great success. And Stunning Dimitri plays so good here uh, this year, yes. last year, so he ha has to just signed for 10, ten <laughs> next, next years time. and his chess career is secured, yes. What an absolutely stunning uh, performance by the, the young German player. And yeah, we can only tip our hat. Uh, for those of you watching, if you're wondering why we hail him, congratulate him uh, when he's even on points with Vishian, and that is true. But uh, Dimitri, the winner on tiebreak for most, most wins. Yes, yes. Most wins uh, rule. He lost uh, to uh, Daniel Friedman in the first yes. round. And then uh, actually uh, a little bit unfortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a better position. And then uh, he won brilliant game against Michael Adams. Yes. It's already turned uh, the whole mm -hmm. event. Ever, yes. Yeah. And two draws against uh, Vishwanathan Anand mm. in a very solid manner. Yes. And now the, this victory put him. But it in was this a position. very close field. I mean, both Fishy and Dimitri finished on plus one. Yes. 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 But of course, it's not so many rounds. Yes. Uh, so six rounds. Yes. And only six rounds plus one is, is not a high score, but uh, it's uh, a good score. A good score, yes. Yes. Okay, well, let's go back now to to Matthias Blübaum because we can see in the top right corner that Rasmus and Erwin uh, have finished their game, which ended in a draw. Maybe we can very quickly just show the last click through the last moves uh, from Rasmus and Erwin to show how that finished. It was not they really. Everything. Yes, it was not really worth to investigate. No. Okay, so let's go uh, back to. Unless if you want no, to know no, how no. to make a draw in <laughs> drawing position. If I was playing against Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it wouldn't change the result if it, if it would be. A you have a lot of confidence in me, I appreciate I have it. Confi <laughs> I have confidence, yes. Okay, so the last game of this 2022 Sparkassen Chess Trophy is going on here with Matthias Blübaum still trying to squeeze the full point out of this work ending. Uh, but it looks like at the moment there isn't, he hasn't really found a way to, to make progress. Yes, it doesn't look so... Uh, Dangerous yet. Mm. 
Bătrâi mai, mai start atât. Stil, stil între care să care fel de fel din care văd să că Matei străis hart and if you take G on the H plan away, yeah, then we know that theoretical draw would arise. Uh, Hopefully, but, Matthias will not lose both funds. <laughs> but but not uh, immediately. H3 yes. is not possible yes. for many reasons, and it would also lead to unfortunate situation mm. with uh, King cut. Mm. We can we can try to to make it, let's say, very bad move, not recommended. And it's actually lost position after check. Yes, it's mm. simply. Uh, two two pawns. Yes. Yeah, so so winning for white. Uh, black can try to do it on the different terms. Uh, I think uh, we may may see the move. Not yet. Yes. So uh, Bogdan is thinking. I think we will also will come down to the last, the very last seconds here in this game. I don't think that it will end in the next ten minutes. I think yes. will try. He played rook h7, that's what I also thought to suggest, to because wait. it's easier move yeah. to, to, to play maybe h6. Mm. Practical move, rook f6 doesn't mean anything, but just waiting move, yeah. just to, to get maybe a little bit of more time on the clock and uh, let let the opponent mm. to think if we are really threatening anything. Uh, I don't see this as a big issue. For example, if black would play h3, I don't see the problems for... And uh, now we are back in this uh, kind of endgame we were looking at with Luke. Yes, uh, the, the yes. big point that uh, if you transpose, then already we are in like, mm. safe territory, it is theoretical position, mm. so nothing special can happen. Yeah? Very important here that King is only uh, cut on only one line. Mm. So it is relatively close, and uh, that that is enough to, to make a draw. So H3 leads to a draw. That's actually how it should be played, in my opinion. I think because Bogdan it, is calculating. It is, it is uh, makes defense more easy. Here, just checking, it, I, I guess this mm. is correct, because it is the last, it could be last decision yeah, for, for him, last decision of the game. Let us see it. let us see why it may be draw. Yeah. Alvor here also black king is horizontally mm. cut, but there is no way to, to improve the position because also black white king is cut and uh, uh, we cannot connect with the pawn. So okay, what if the rook goes back to the white rook, let's say goes back to F8 and if we just try and push the pawn after the the, Let us see. We took, yeah. took, rook, rook goes to f8. Uh, okay, the, the technically uh, nice move is mm -hmm. check because it, it cuts white king even Yeah, further. so let's say I start with, with uh, instead of, yeah, I start by pushing the pawn. Oh, well, you start with king. I start with the king, yes. King, yes. yes, king move, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is actually a more interesting situation. We have this type of position. And okay, black has different uh, different types of defenses. Mm. Actually, king is from uh, so-called short side, and the rook may be put on the long side. Mm -hmm. It is already very easy way to, to just give side checks. Way to to to, draw, to make a draw in mm. this descending. Uh, it would be different if the dif uh, if king would be cut further, mm. or white would maybe push pawns uh, further. Yeah? Then mm. it, it would be more difficult. But still, uh, I think for our viewers, it's useful to remember this uh, roles. Yeah, king king on the short side, mm. rook on the long side. For, uh, that's how we are looking at the pawn, and then we see, okay, this is a long side, yeah, and this is a short side, yeah? mm. so that's what uh, what we mean by this, and king should be always on the short side, so oh, it is much preferable, mm. exactly for this reason, when we are attacking from, uh, when we are doing checks, 
important to see that we, there is like three squares mm. between rook and pawn. Then it is a very safe flank attack. And here, of course, black can do it immediately, and uh, it's a simple, simple draw. Mm. So h3 would mean that the game is going to finish soon, in my opinion. Bogdan is still thinking. He now has four minutes, uh, just over four minutes. But I think the fact that he is taking so long is indicating that he's looking at h3. And just wants uh, yes, to yes. Sure. That's that's the most simple way. Uh, it's uh, of course it's not the only way to mm. to make a draw. But let us just maybe again to see what is going on here. Yeah? Let me just okay. We said king k2, uh, rook h8. Let me just uh, explain a little bit other uh, mm. slightly different thing. That's position like this. The position like this is also theoretical draw. Uh, not much can 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 happen. Mm -hmm. The problem is that if right king is running, we have also this type of defense now mm -hmm. called frontal attack. Yes. And now if it tries to protect the pawn, we can always attack the rook. Mm -hmm. Rook one king. So we also very simple mm -hmm. draw. Uh, Diak is still thinking, so uh, we can learn a little bit more of uh, endgame theory. If Do you if think you he like. would play H3? <laughs> no, but I think it's very instructive. I think he would play H3, but, but this is of course ki kind of easier situation, mm -hmm. yeah, to just to, to force the yes. draw. It's uh, kind of course, I think what you're saying is there are many other moves that he can play that will also hold the draw, but in a way h3 is the most forcing because... Yes, because it uh, immediately simplifies. gets uh, simplifies and yeah. gets a theoretical position. Yes. So what, what do you want? Yeah? <laughs> what more could we ask for? So Bogdan, two and a half minutes on the clock. We expect h3. But the fact that Bogdan is thinking so long, yeah. it means that he is not 100% sure. Mm. And it is one thing to study the sendings yeah. at home, you know, to have a nice book of Mark Dvoretsky, <laughs> to open it, to, to look at this position, and you think you know it, mm. but you know it only if you are absolutely 100% sure in such a situation. Mm where probably, let's say, draw means that you mm -hmm. can take a better price. Yeah? Yes. You lose and you may be third, third place and yes. draw you second. Uh, when it counts yeah, to, to be able to perform the knowledge, mm -hmm. that's a different. Yes, and oh, here he goes. I yes, think he, H3 he, I think he goes coming. to H3, yes. yes. So H3 has just been played and, well, now we will land in those theoretical positions you were just showing us. In this theoretical position, yes. Nothing can happen now. And I think Matthias also knows, Matthias we can knows see from his, his body language that I don't think... I think he will try for a little bit. Uh, well, he, he tried a lot. He, yeah. he actually uh, really, really put a big effort. Mm. He was close to winning. Mm. But at the end, uh, Jack, uh, on the whole, he probably also deserved a very little bit of luck today. Yes. And, and uh, he played a very strong event. Uh, together with Pavel Ilyanov, he made a very big impression. Yes. And also Luke, yes. uh, I, I would say, as these three, that there were no accident that they were dominating in the top three, yes. in top three were playing between each other. In I mean, it, it's uh, crazy to think that these three players who finished in the top three were the only three players to win a game, uh, the, the bottom four players. So Matthias, Rasmus, Erwin and David Navarro did not uh, win. Any games, Any games yes. yes. It shows yeah. the actual excellent form of, well, of these three. three. Yeah. Yeah. So what do we have? Matthias played king 
King Kitu, Kitu. we are still in our analysis, basically, uh, many, many moves, Rook, Rook H1 was played, it uh, all doesn't matter so much, basically, it's important to bring, for, for example, bring the Rook to, to, the, uh, to, side, the, to the, side. the long side. Mm. Four, we can have uh, different ways, also King g5 would be draw. Uh, we even can cut the king. Mm. That's still a good good method. Also this move is still a, still a draw, mm. of course, because if rook f5 then then we can also cut cut everything. Mm. King goes and not in danger here. Mm. And I'm not sure actually how much Matthias. Well, let's see. Okay, King. G King D three. King D three was played. Let let me let us see. I think Matthias will still try a few more moves, but also Bogdan will be playing fast now. A because I think he understands how he should hold, and B because he just doesn't have so much time left on the clock. And, yeah. Okay, King G5 improves the position. There are not so many things that you can do, uh, wrong. do, do wrong in this mm -hmm. position, yes. It is uh, a standard position uh, and it will be even draw with white pawn much more advanced Advance, yes, yes. Than, than this. Yeah, it's still on A3, mm -hmm. so you have all, all time to put pieces correctly. For Matthias, of course, it's a, a disappointing end to the tournament. He was really pressing today for the, the whole game. At some point in this rook and queen ending, it felt like he was maybe getting somewhere. But I think, I think, I think it was he cl close to, to, uh, to good form, in, yes. in fact. But uh, uh, closer is not enough in this competition. He lost the first game against... Uh, a very good uh, Luke McShane, uh, which, who played a really brilliant game. Mm. And then he lost an ending against Pavel Ilyanov. Yes. Also difficult task uh, to defend sli slightly worse endings. Yes. And that makes a huge difference. Mm, for sure. He has, I don't know, in this game he definitely had a chance to mm. score. Uh, but maybe not so many other chances, mm. in, in fact. Yeah. Yeah, so Rook F8 played, and I think... I think he would wait for the move like Rook A1, and mm. then he already can uh, see if uh, Andrzej Filipovic is coming <laughs> closer to, to, the, yes. to the board, and yes. then, uh, then he can call it... Uh, My guess is, well, if we zoom out the camera for a second, I think we will see that uh, Andrzej Filipovic yeah, okay, is played. probably sitting. And Rook A1 is indication no. that yeah. opponent knows I thought that he might already be close, but now he is in his his own chair. He made a small side. small break, yes. I guess. But <laughs> but this is a good moment. He will come soon. Yes, I think Rook A1 is a signal yes. that yes. Diak has the position in 100% under, under control. control. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we can see Dirk pacing there, up and down the front of the stage. It uh, was difficult defense for yes, him. For yes, sure. he needed to to defend the uh, position. Yes. Yeah. I think it was unfortunate decision for him mm. uh, to go for this uh, queen end and rook end game. Mm. Uh, and uh, he was a uh, little bit lucky yes. to survive, actually, yes. because uh, was under risky moves, H4, G5 was under huge mm -hmm. pressure. For sure. But now the draw is uh, within reach. We don't expect this game to last too much longer. And that will mean for Bogdan Dirk second place, half a point behind the tournament winner Pavel Ilyanov, who uh, played some fantas fantastic chess, finished on plus three, four and a half, out of uh, out of six, and uh, Luke McShane coming in coming in third. This will be and on the podium. It looks like only today it was a difficult game for yes. Pavel. Yeah, only today he yes. was really in danger yeah, on, on on the last day, and all others. He was so much in control. Mm. But I think it can happen. It happens so often, I feel, that players who had a great tournament in the last round uh, 
even uh, okay i was thinking more in the case when they uh, have already won the tournament which was not the case but i think from very early pavel understood that deck will not win it was quite clear i think quite early no no you're absolutely right mm. this is uh, not easy sit situation and you have to master it yeah. and uh, Okay, in, in this tournament uh, there were no, no easy games uh, yeah. because uh, simply of a very, le very good level, a very close level yeah, yeah. of competition. Yes. So uh, that's n normal. Uh, after all, that with black you, you, you will have to suffer. Yes. And there we see the disappointment on Matthias Plibam's uh, face as he. But he I knows. think, okay, he pushed the pawn and uh, it looks like uh, the, the quick draw will be. Mm. I think after some checks from the side, you don't have. Nothing to do. Nothing to do, and maybe he will g g give uh, the pawn up, uh, will give mm. the pawn away, or exchange everything and uh, yes. two kings would stay. Yeah, that is possible f finish of mm. this game. So rook e3 th is played, king d4. Rook e4 is played, king d5. I, I almost know the finish. <laughs> king d5, rook a, a5, and now he would go to c6, I would say. Black would play rook e5 You're and rook e5. Correct. Yes? <laughs> I'm so good in... Oh, in although, uh, no, uh, you're no? wrong. Bogdan I'm continue wrong. with the checks. He played rook a6 check. Uh, uh, he, he went king c6. He went king c6, yes. Uh, no, no, okay. Oh, Are you wait. sure? No, I'm not sure. No, the king is... King came back. I'm not sure That's what this was going on. We, we, we lost the... No, but the, the king... Can we I zoom in for a second? The king is there in, in front somewhere. Yeah, the king yes, is on Yes, he went to d7 and... Uh, okay, you were correct, the king did head gone. I don't know, our board <laughs> lost the plot a little bit. <laughs> okay, but now the rooks will be exchanged. Yes, that's another way uh, to, to get it. And the king will go. I think we yes. will end with bear kings once again in this okay, we last we, we, game. We can't the show this last moves uh, yet, but uh, now I can show you. Uh, nothing happened. No, I expected a uh, quick uh, finish after rook e5, but uh, it was continuing to give checks, yes. And that's how the game was finished. With bear kings, as it should be for the last game of the tournament, I think the pawn was probably given up as well. I hope that they played until bear kings, but something like this, we had a handshake. We congratulate uh, Dirk on a, a fantastic second place here in Dortmund, and big congratulations once again to Pavel Ilyanov, winning uh, the German Grand Prix on four and a half out of six. And a special congratulations to Dimitri Collars, who won uh, the NC World Masters uh, ahead of Fishian and Mickey yes, Adams. Yes, very exciting of finish of, of this event. And the whole tournament was, uh, was a big chess fest for, uh, for, for many players here uh, and for the participation uh, for players of open tournaments. Mm. And I hope also that you enjoyed watching it uh, in our stream of course we want to thank uh, our uh, our sponsors first of all the sparkasse for supporting uh, the tournament also a big shout out to everyone who is working so hard behind the scenes you, you cannot see them but uh, there is a fantastic team here making this event happen so uh, a big shout out to them a big shout out to our fantastic production team and uh, arthur a big thank you to you thank it's you. been an thank absolute you so much, pleasure friend. The pleasure was mine. Also, big shout out to all the, the team in the venue, the arbiters, everyone who's working so hard, the volunteers. Uh, there's so, so many people here making this happen. And last but certainly not least, uh, a big thank you to you out there who are watching us for this past uh, week. It's been a, a great pleasure being your commentators. And, well, hopefully we will be back next year, Arthur. Hopefully, and uh, please stay healthy and uh, all the best to our viewers. Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next year. Take care. Bye-bye.